Lift off. All right. <clears throat> Thanks for your patience. Uh, meeting of the uh, Cannabis Control Board of the City of Jersey City held Monday, November 14th at uh, approximately 5, 10 p.m. Uh, in accordance with the Open Public uh, Meetings Act, uh, adequate notice of this meeting was provided by mail and or fax to the Jersey Journal and the reporter. Roll call, please. Chairperson Bunny. Here. Vice Chair Kaplowitz. Here. Commissioner Sally Perkins. Here. Commissioner Sloan. Here. Commissioner Flanagan is absent. Also with us, we have Assistant Corporation Counsel Tom Slattery. Uh, well, we can read it. I mean, it's, we're hearing an application. Um, just a reminder, I'm going to read the Cannabis Control Board and its duties. The Cannabis Control Board was created by the Jersey City Municipal Council. The CCB is a result of the council adopting an ordinance. We are not the planning board or the zoning board. Those boards were created by state legislation. The Jersey City Planning Board or the zoning board will hear your application as to zoning and land use development issues. The CCB will consider the following factors in its determination to approve or deny your application. Community impact and outreach input. The number of cannabis establishments within close proximity, less than 1,000 feet to the applicant. Just because a cannabis establishment is less than 1,000 feet from your application is not necessarily a negative factor. Each application must be evaluated on the totality of factors in the surrounding neighborhood. Hiring practices... In, uh, Sorry, three, hiring practices employed by the applicant. Four, residency of all applicants and owners. Five, applicants' commitment to diversity and inclusion best practices. Six, safety and security plans. If the board approves the application, the board will issue a preliminary resolution of support. Once the applicant obtains state approval, the applicant must return to the CCB for final approval. The CCB shall provide final written approval or rejection within 60 days. An applicant could obtain preliminary approval from the CCB, obtain state approval, but be denied final CCB approval. The CCB will ensure compliance with local rules and regulations governing cannabis. Jersey City encourages and promotes participation of minorities, women, and disabled veteran-owned cannabis businesses, and by extension, so, so shall the CCB. The CCB shall require a Class 5 cannabis retail business applicant to address concerns about the proximity of a proposed location to a substance abuse treatment center or daycare center. All right, thank you for that. The first application is CCB 22-30, strictly CBD LLC. Uh, I am recused from this application. The board is lucky to have uh, Tom Slatterly much younger and smarter than I am. So you can take either have my seat or sit where you are. It's up to you, Tom. Here's fine. Thanks, Ron. All right. All right. Does the record reflect that Courtney is recusing herself as well? Do we have the applicant? You can you can come up. Um, if you could, just please state your name for the record. Uh, sure. Good evening. Uh, my name is Matthew Miller from the law firm of M.G. Miller, here representing applicants Strictly CBD, LLC. Jeffrey Devine, partner in Strictly CBD. Venus Smith, partner in Strictly CBD. Thank you. If you could raise your right hand for me, I'm just going to swear you in. Counsel, you don't have to. You're okay. Do you solemnly affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth to the best of your ability? I do. Thank you very much. Oh, you, I'm you sorry. Want. No, Ron usually runs the meetings. Oh, yeah, you guys, no, <laughs> I apologize. I was just texting Stacy for an ETA. Um, go ahead, whenever you're ready. <laughs> I'm sorry. Ron oh, sure. usually does so it. So. Why, don't, why don't you start by telling us a little bit about your application? Uh, absolutely. I think I'll let uh, the two partners of the applicant, uh, they, they believe they each have a statement, and then we'll uh, be happy to answer any questions the board may have. Okay. Um, I'm Venus Smith. I am... Um, Jersey City residents. I have been since 2005. 
Um, we opened this store in 2018. Um, what do you need to know about me? I am involved in our community. I started with the Union Street Block Association. Um, I'm one of the founders of Black Wall Street, Jersey City chapter. And I'm also the one with the big mouth that complained about the homeowners losing 95% um, of their proceeds to the city. So I'm involved in our community and I raise kids here. I drive every morning. <laughs> I'm in the city. Uh, I'm Jeffrey Devine. I'm partners with Venus. We've uh, known each other uh, forever, it seems now. Um, we've been operating strictly CBD in Jersey City, first on West Side Avenue, uh, you know, in the West Side section, and then down into the Bergen Lafayette section on Communipaw. Uh, we've always strove for quality product and education. I think education is very important. Um, as well as I've made statements before that if you're taking from a community, you need to give back to a community. That's why we are so uh, focused on the different things we do, whether it be Black Wall Street or, um, you know, um, giving education to the, I think it was called Now Med Now on West Side, uh, training the doctors there about CBD um, and things like that, and uh, always giving back to the community. We certainly... Uh, done that in our local area, um, making sure that we provide for safety of our community and our neighborhood by getting involved with uh, Director Moody and Chief Martinez and creating a presence down there so uh, that we can make sure that everybody is taken care of. Um, certainly serving underprivileged communities is important to us. I'm a son of an uh, Air Force veteran in Vietnam. I'm an American Asian individual. And I am an LGBTQIA person. I think we're going to take a five minute break here. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Welcome. You made it from the airport. <laughs> oh, no, this is not. This is the reporter. This oh, is not the I board thought, member. I thought the suitcase. I'm like, wow, that's really early. <laughs> you know, she said seven. So. He's bringing samples. Oh, okay. We're not allowed to do any of that. <laughs> okay. Sorry about that. <laughs> Five stars really come a long way. Back in the day, they used to have this single color. No, no, you're fine. Actually, you broke the movie. Thank you. Did you get stuck in traffic? Oh, there's some outlets right here. Don't worry, you don't have to move anything. I'm okay. You sure? Yes, I'm okay. sure. Thank you so much. You're just accommodating people. Yeah, cut it out. Stop Jersey. Come on. <laughs> I'm from New York. We don't accommodate. Yes, you do. <laughs> New Yorkers are the nicest. Oh, okay. <laughs> I feel like New Yorkers are nice if you follow the rules. Well, right? if you're standing so in the middle of the sidewalk, you're not going to get any love. No. <laughs> I will run you over. <laughs> These jokes. <laughs> There's so many people from other places in New York. I have asked. I don't know who mm. it is. Yep. Which do I just sit down? What works for the Oriental Research? I think so. I know. I like working. That's wonderful. Very familiar. But that's not good teamwork. And it's completely <laughs> fracturing all the. Everyone was working very well together. I, no. I, I had no idea. I just saw the suitcase and I assumed. It's <laughs> like she really did just come right down. from the airport. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, wow. That is dedication. I have not voted based on emotion, no. Well, you're a wonderful person. I have not voted based on emotion. No. Hey. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, it seems like it came 
up on mine like this. <laughs> so it comes up like that, and then when I do it, then it goes to Adobe Acrobat. Then I have to back it to go back to the event. So it's like, um, okay, thanks everyone for your patience. We appreciate it um, as we get the court reporter set up and can have a transcription. Um, this is the voice of Tom Slattery. I'm the assistant corporation counsel. Um, we're just going to pick up where we left off. We'll marry the two transcripts after the, after the meeting so we won't make you repeat yourselves. Um, but I um, believe we were just finishing up statements by the applicants. So Yeah, uh, as I was saying, we, we've already uh, take uh, giving back to the community is a very important role as a business in a community. And, uh, you know, uh, given things this evening, hopefully we get an approval so we can continue to do that and enrich our community and build up the businesses and the neighborhood around us as well. So I think that's all I have to say. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, so, <clears throat> well, I, I suppose um, to the chairperson, would you like to start with questions or would you like me to do so? Uh, well, I think obviously we're looking for a little more than just a brief overview of who you guys are. So what are you already doing with the community? What are you looking to do with the community? Um, and your location now is in Ward A or is it Ward F? Well, <laughs> it was Ward F and then... Changed the line, so now we're in Ward F, but we're still yeah. in Bergen Lafayette. Okay, okay. So Ward A. Ward A. Yeah, no, you're, yeah, I, mean, I believe you're Ward A now. now. Okay. Yeah, we were Ward F. Okay. <laughs> so... Um, well, I mean, I think we spoke of some of the stuff that we've already done, uh, Black Wall Street. Um, yeah, but what does, I, I don't know what Black Wall Street does, so can you guys tell us more? Um, Black Wall Street Speaking is Speaking to the mic. Oh, so sorry. Black Wall Street is an organization that supports small black-owned businesses or all black-owned businesses in Jersey City. Um, I'm no longer a part of Black Wall Street. I'm actually solely working on um, the homeowners right now. And also, I do things like give back, give money to DCM, which is Deliverance Children Ministry, our Triangle Park, they, um, Halloween, just try to give for every event that they're having. You know, um, I think Monica was just awarded with uh, some award and we bought seats at her table. So we constantly try to support also yeah. Kismets of Kings. We support them. We support them financially now. We're going to continue and hopefully do more. Yeah. And then as, as well as supporting the local gay businesses, I've made sure to uh, be part of their, um, whether it's their Christmas, uh, you know, fair or whatever, making sure that we either represent or uh, provide gift cards, Montessori school, um, as I said, I did education at the Now Med for the, um, the doctors there when they wanted to know about CBD. We did uh, the Mary Bethune Medical Fair as well. We, we've constantly been active, so sorry if it seems like we're just trying to grasp at different things, but that's what we're doing. We, as you saw in our application, we do have plans on one of our programs called the Green Dream, and that's to build up other minority-owned businesses to be able to go through this process, which you I already know it's fairly arduous and stressful and can be very difficult on a small mom and pop organization rather than being a, an MSO or somebody with really deep pockets. Um, as Vina said, we are we have been residents in this community, so we see the things going on. Um, I brought up the Director Moody thing because we had, you know, quite a few problems down in our area that needed to be yeah, five and, and four days <laughs> that we needed to have addressed so that our community itself, as well as the businesses around us, um, can thrive. We have uh, 12 other businesses just in our block radius of where we are. We got those um, people all joined together so that we could get something done to move forward the community. So um, we're going to continue to make efforts like that. We also plan on sponsoring, uh, I know we, you know we might not be there yet, but the workforce plan, we, we plan on, we live in 07304 and 07305. We plan on getting people from there as well as military um, seniors, things like that, anywhere we can um, help the under-marginalized and underserved communities, or over-marginalized and underserved communities, sorry. <laughs> Strike that, reverse it. So the Green Dream is a part, one part of it, mm -hmm. and the Green Dreams Fund is about finding one person out of 07304, 07305, who would like to obtain a cannabis license, and we are dedicating 10000 to 50000 towards them 
obtaining a license, anything from lawyer fees, um, application fees. We'll, we're definitely planning on for a year. You know, we're we're definitely planning on helping them get into ownership. So what you're saying is that you're 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 going to like if if someone from 07304 or 07305 would like to start a retail store that you you would invest the money and start them. Is that what you're saying? Absolutely. We're absolutely willing. We, well, we would help with the process, too, before you even get to the investment of opening the place, right? It's all these things beforehand that we've now gone through and put through. So, um, you know, when we were, you know, going through this process, there were people coming to us wanting $40,000 to write your application. That's, that's not realistic for a <laughs> mom and pop <laughs> operation. So we want to help navigate people because even though... You know, the sound bites are that we're helping minority owned mom and pop and everything. The, 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 the things in place currently don't make it easy for people uh, like us to get through it. And we want to do that. And for example, like what you were saying is I, I think a way of that doing that is bringing them into the business, you know, as an employee, as a bud tender in the space, letting them understand how we do it so they get that base as well. I know we were planning on doing, um, you know, scholarships so they could take the bud tenders course. Because for some people who are trying to get in the business, the five, $600 just to take that course may be prohibitive to them. So we want to make kind of those things, we make it a little bit smoother than it has been for us, you know, as this process goes along, if well, that answers. What's your immediate plan on, on hiring um, minority brown and brown, black and brown people? Do you have a plan for that? Yes, so we're only hiring from our area. We were the two social equity um, zip codes on the state application, the only two in Hudson County. And our, our plan is to hire from where we are. And who, who, are, you, who are you working with? Work, so we were, with? okay, so our goal was to work with the JCETP, which we know is now gone. Um, we are actually... Um, going to work with the reentry program is from they have they meet every thursday and they're with the um, i know them from the new jersey together so every thursday they have a meeting and it's the reentry program actually of ex-offenders for cannabis and other things so we want to pull some of our employees from there and then in our community, we're also going to um, reach out through our block associations and through the Bethune Center. We're just going to reach out and we'll train them through the system, right? So we're paying for their training through either Raritan College. All of the colleges have a module where, where they can take it on their own or on, through Zoom or whatever. They have a module. And we will pay for that right so once we pull them from our community we're going to pay for their training if they want to go on and become a owner we'll pay for their hccc training which is the program that gives you more of a license i believe before um before we took our little break there you had um, given us the date that you opened your current location what was that it was August of 2000. Oh, the current location? Yeah. Well, we were started at West Side and then we moved. I see. Okay. You said you opened in 2018, right? Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. And yes. I'm sorry, you said you were one of two, I'm something two in the zip code. What was that? 07304 and 07305. Okay. I, I don't think that's currently accurate because there are two that have been approved in Ward A already. No, 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 no by no. the state. Hold on. Okay. The zip code for Hudson County for social equity. Oh, okay. State. I understand now. Okay. Um, so could you tell me a little bit more about the relationship you have with your current neighbors in terms of businesses in, in the area? You sort of touched on it there, but can you go into a little more detail about, you know, what kind of relationship you have with the businesses that are currently around you? Well, some of them are here. Yeah, I was going to say, some of them are here. Uh, <laughs> some of them, them may, you know, have little nicknames for, for, for us and stuff. <laughs> but uh, I'm, I'm always out and present on the block. I'm always at the store. I check in with every business every morning when I come in, say hello. As I said, I've got them organized so that we can get some things done in our area. Um, we also um, support those businesses and plan to continue to do that, you know, as 
you know, if we are awarded this, obviously we're going to try to bring those businesses around us. Uh, for instance, when, uh, you know, we were at the planning or zoning, they were talking about lines and things like that. We have ideas about giving people, hey, there's, uh, you know, this place down here, we can go grab a bite to eat. You've, you've placed your order. We have to put it together. Map. You know, and you can go down there, we'll give you a call, you can come back so we can cut down on the line. But that helps support that Bergen Lafayette area where you're seeing, you know, new restaurants and other old businesses that have been there for a long time and feel like maybe they're going to get pushed out. We're trying to lift all those people up and make sure that they, you know, stake their claim and hold their place in the community there. Um, no, no, we're at three, we're 394 Commuter Paw. Oh, 394 Yeah. <laughs> No, no, we're by Woodward, right Woodward by Berry Lane Park, by the factory. Oh, you drive by the factory. Yeah, we're, well, we're, we're a little down. down by the factory. We're like yeah. one block from the factory. Yeah. Closer to Woodward Street? Yes, yes. Woodward, and Woodward and Van Horn. Okay. So those 12 businesses right there. And then we're those restaurants. Yes, El and Tiffy. the hair shop, yeah. and, and the, the taco Dominican place. Dominican. And, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. Have an, well, have an, the laundromat, yes, and yes, in the next one. Yep, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, and that's where they put the new, what's the new building called there? Yeah. Uh -huh. The condo building. But our goal is to map all of the small businesses next to us because they, they all have ATMs as well. So we want to map the ATMs, map what each person has, and then, like he said, because we want to have a system where People aren't really standing in line. There's a daycare center there too, right? Yes, we so love we the daycare center. The daycare yeah, center. yeah, she we signed our. Them. Yeah, <laughs> she signed we our thing for them. the group. I mean, there's an, another school that is over there, like further down. She said the same thing. Listen, I don't really want it in our community, but if if you know we have to have it, we we would like for you guys to have it. And she wrote a letter about it. So we know they don't love it. Obviously, it's kids. And what's your operation hours? Right now, we're only Wednesday through Saturday um, from 11 to 6. We will be from Monday through Saturday from 10 to 8. 10 to 8. You know, we're, about we're 10 still 10, about 10 to 8. But we, you know, that consideration was also to make sure because, we're, you know, we talk with the church as well. So we don't want to interfere with their services or anything. So on we made sure to be closed off on Sundays. You know, so it doesn't interfere with what they're doing. And as I said, I've already, you know, we've spoken with the daycare. We have a, a good relationship with them. We, you know, not to toot our own home, but we have a good relationship with all the businesses around us and our neighbors because it's important to us. You know, as I said, if you're part of a community, you really need to be part of it. You don't just sit there and take money and not pay attention to anything else that's going on. That's just the wrong way to do it. <laughs> you know, yeah, well, not you don't a lot of money. money but <laughs> not after uh, COVID and everything, but you know, we. we Are you going to still continue your CBD? Uh, so that's ceasing. Well, the we can't. you we can't do both. Yeah, it's against this, state regulations. Of the state, we're, okay. we're unable to do it in the, the same place. We will continue to do maybe online because we do have a, a clientele that comes to us. Um, right. You know, uh, as a personal donor, I think it's silly that we can't do it because, you know, you guys worry about people taking one toke too many or things like that. CBD is a great way to just even it all out for you. But what we will do um, is continue the quality and the education because a lot of people think with recreational there's not much education needed right but there's there are things to be con considered if a client comes to me and says you know Jeffrey I want to get something but I, I suffer from anxiety and and uh, heart things then I'm not going to recommend a high-end sativa to them I'm going to say maybe we need to do a hybrid because you still want to be awake you don't want that indica in the couch feeling but we're going to do maybe a 70 30 thing and you know responsible vending is important right and responsible dosage and, and letting people know how they can do things and making sure that they're having a good experience rather than having a bad one that's very important to me um, and, and, and we've always done that you know um, there's a lot of <coughs> CBD and gas stations and everywhere else right but you're not getting the education you're not understanding dosage you're not understanding what it does in your body and you know Again, unless you come to a place like mine where we talk about it and we really let you know. Sometimes it's a little too much information for people, but I'm like, I'd rather yeah. you know mm -hmm. than you not know. And what's your secure, uh, safety and security plan? Um, we have obviously existing cameras in place and monitors and everything. We will be getting an additional security guard as well. Um, and it, it'll be all monitored. We, you know, obviously we have I'm sorry. a list. Of, go ahead. Um, you do do you have our application where you can see it? So mm -hmm. we did actually put in a security system right from you, the It's very, 
Just yeah. basics. Don't go into anything of any real substance. We we do have it. Yeah. Just know you're yeah, set up exactly. Yes. Yeah. Right. Well, that's you know. We have cameras, a buzz. You, you have know, one buzz. guard or two guards. We're going to well, hire two, but obviously one. One at, at a time, time. right? Because so we're only, remember we're only three hundred square feet. We're not even. Yeah. We're a micro business, but we're really we're a micro business. We're not even twenty five hundred square feet. Okay, and so is it an armed? We ask this question to everybody. Yeah, armed? Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. Armed. Actually, it's the same company you guys use here. Uh, <laughs> Just so you I know. have no <laughs> idea. <laughs> We've been talking to them forever. So. Okay. And yes. then we also have the the doors being put in to secure the product that's to be away from clients, right? Our and that's going to have room. A, its own key and uh, lock entry system to, that only coded right now that <laughs> yeah. Venus and I will be able to go into. Yeah. Um, so we've taken the precautions to make sure that everything we have break glass sensors, all of that. A panic button. Yeah. We do. And then we have the battery backup system if the power goes out. No. So we do have those things in place now. We are intending to upgrade to uh, 360 rotating cameras outside because our camera doesn't rotate at this point. But we will upgrade. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you don't have to even share that level of detail just so that you okay. can protect right, your we're, business. We're, and maybe we're a little nervous. We yeah, just <laughs> no, I understand. I know, what's but security, <laughs> yeah, just very brief yeah. overview. We've been doing a lot of this for so we're not yeah, sure. But. Totally, I get it. <laughs> And you're a micro business, so obviously you can only hire 10 employees, but you've already said you are hoping to hire people who are in the 07304 and 07305 as zip done, code as we've and done in the past, that too. you are going to look to hire uh, veterans and seniors. Absolutely. Yeah, okay. And then just so you all know, at, we, we couldn't retrofit our store for um, dis, uh, disabled. We couldn't get it done. It's too small. So we're hiring um, someone from the disabled community to handle all of our social media. So, just so you know, we're trying to get everybody in. Yeah. We, you know, we recycle. <laughs> we use recycle back hot ink stamp. We try to always be I, conscious of all of it. And what do you plan to pay to start? So our numbers are, to pay I believe the we are at $20 an hour. 20 to 25 I think, for yes. both Well, I think we have an exact in here somewhere. What did you say? I'm sorry. What did you say? Sorry. The salary? What did you say? I believe it's between 20 and $25 an hour to start. And um, they benefits? So we actually are, um, we spoke to the union uh, Michelle Manini over at the union. I met her at Canademics. We have spoken to the union. We actually want to hire the employees first and ask them if they want to. Okay. Because what we've noticed is that some of the seniors, it might actually mess up their their retirement. And again, even, you know, for my own sake, we do plan on offer, you know, getting benefits for the company itself to be Especially able to medical. be offered uh, particularly medical, um, so you know, because a lot of times people who have been underserved and are older or vets, right? Uh, the one vet that I have in mind for, you know, manager eventually, uh, you know, has a lot of uh, different things wrong with him that that's happened due to his service, right? So mm -hmm. we want to be conscious of those things because oftentimes when you put things in place, you end up making it more hoops for people to jump through that they've already been going through. Worse. So we don't want to make any more hoops. Okay. Go ahead, if you have anything. I don't. You just asked my, uh, you asked, you <laughs> oh. asked my question right as I was about Took to. Took it away from him. <laughs> Glenda, Jeff, do you guys have any questions? No, I think their application was self-explanatory. It was. You read it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it took a lot. <laughs> you know, read it. Yeah. Between this, the state. And I know you, um, noticing is not a requirement. But you have stated that you have met with the business owners in your neighborhood. Have you done any outreach to the community as a whole? Well, we we are, um, I'm sorry, let me just ask you, meaning what? Community members, neighbors. Uh, okay, are you are you saying have we reached out to them regarding cannabis? Because yeah, well, do people know that a cannabis business is coming into their neighborhood? Yes. Well, yeah. You guys are already selling yeah. CBD, which is sort of interchangeable in a lot of ways. Yeah. So it is a cannabis so business. Yeah, right? it's yeah. probably <laughs> not as disruptive as it would be in other parts of the they city. Really like us, I swear. <laughs> yeah, the Morris Canal um, yeah. development 
Oh, we didn't even they, mention that, yeah. Yes, so we work with them a lot. They definitely, they, they supported us in the planning board meeting. June Jones supported us. Um, we also so we with, always work with them. Yeah, and we've worked with Jersey City uh, offices as well, like the NJDCU with the, the scavenger hunts and, you know, again, JCDC. Be, yeah, I, all yeah. the letters, too many letters for Vanessa. me. <laughs> yeah, Vanessa. Vanessa, but, you know, okay, doing things Vanessa. like that, as well as providing um, <laughs> gifts for things like that, but actually hands-on, actually participating and being at the Apple House and things like that. We've definitely done all that. That's why it's kind of hard to pull it all, because we've done a lot of different things in different places to help, because um, we think it's part, being a part of Jersey City, you got to do that. you got to give back. With June, with June, with June Jones. Glenda, just always. put your microphone down. Sorry, always. Yeah, because we bit, that's June. our community. Okay. So we definitely like. Mars Canal, you do a lot yeah, of Mars Now Canal. and recently with the well, um, reveal of the Harriet Tubman. Oh, that's Tuckman. my community. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, and you know, they're right around the corner from us, so I just walked down there. there. <laughs> yeah. But we try, you know, we do some of the um, vending and. At, I know, I remember seeing you at the vendors. Yes, <laughs> yes. I didn't this time, though. I just wanted to go see the mural. It was beautiful. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. No, I'm, I'm just waiting to see if you have anything further. I don't have any other questions. Jeff, Glenda? No. So motion to move to a work. Oh, well, actually, hold on. You have to. If they have any witnesses, yeah, public um, comment. Sure. Uh, well, f I, I, okay. Do you guys usually do a motion to close their portion or just open it to public comment? We open it Either to public okay. comment. Okay. So if there are any members of the public who want to speak um, in favor or oppose this application, you can do so. Um, can I see it just to show a hands to get a sense? I think I see two. Okay. Then if you just want to figure out amongst yourselves who'd like to come up first, that's fine. <laughs> no, they get three. <laughs> they have three minutes. Is it on? No. Is this on? No. Is it on now? Okay. <laughs> Um, so speaking time, I understand, is three minutes. Mm -hmm. um, so, sir, could you uh, just state your name, please? Jo oh. Name Jonathan and address. Goodman. And and your your address. Full address? Sure. Three Carpenter Court, Jersey City, New Jersey. No problem. Sorry. I missed his name. I missed your name. Your name. J-O-N-A-T-H-A-N, G-O-O-D-M-A-N. And your address? Three Carpenter <laughs> Court. <laughs> Is this part of the three minutes? <laughs> court. Jersey City. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you to the Cannabis Control Board for giving me the opportunity to speak as a member of the public. My name is Jonathan Goodman. I've been a resident of Jersey City for over 20 years. I'm a frequent customer at Strictly CBD. I wanted to take a moment to talk about the store and its owners, who I have known for several years. Jeffrey and Venus are upstanding Jersey City re residents. They have taken active part in communicating the needs of the Bergen Lafayette community, including their efforts to get cameras in the area in an effort to reduce crime. Both Jeffrey and Venus are incredibly knowledgeable about CBD. They understand the science behind the effects of CBD and are able to counsel anyone on the benefits and specific needs of each customer. The addition of cannabis to the Strictly CBD store would not only benefit the surrounding community and individuals looking to mitigate their pain and inflammation outside of pharmaceutical narcotics, but it will also help to reduce rampant use of black market dealers in the area. This is a win-win both for the community and our society. Thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. How you doing? Very well, thank you, sir. Could you state your name also? Jodis Hernandez, that's Y-E-H-U-R-I-Z. And your address? 199 Woodward Street, Jersey City, New Jersey, 07300. Okay, sir, the speaking time is three minutes. You can begin when you're ready. Um, well, I'm, I was pretty much raised in Jersey City. Um, I have a restaurant uh, off of Woodward as well, where I pretty much uh, met Venus and Jeffrey. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, pretty much, you know, since I've met them about two years ago, it's been a lovely experience. They pretty much came while we were doing construction and pretty much introduced themselves and, you know, 
pretty much, I wouldn't say show us around the area, but, you know, helped us get to know a little bit of our neighbors. Um, about a year ago, I got in an accident. So I have like a messed up shoulder, messed up knee. And um, pretty much the first person my wife and I spoke to was Jeffrey. And he pretty much, uh, you know, told us a couple of things to use. Because I'm not a fan of, you know, taking uh, painkillers and stuff like that. So he, you know, told me, you know, you should try these oil, these um, these lotions um, and stuff like that to use. And honestly, you know, using that helps me way better to, to fall asleep, to actually calm down, you know, the pain that's there. So the education, is, you know, he, he's all for it. Because he told me, you know, use this, you know, two, three times a day, you know, rub it in for, you know, about five, ten minutes each time, whatever the case is. And pretty much from there, you, you know, he – He's all for the community. Like we call him the major, the mayor of Communipod because he's always there. You know, <laughs> like I said, we were there. I want to say we came in construction in November. We knew him by the second week, and from there on, you know, we see each other every day. And he's always checking in any issues in, you know, on the block. We we know about it before we even enter. All right, thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Were there any other public speakers? Regarding this application? Motion to close the public portion. There's a motion to close the public portion of Second. Uh, this application that is seconded. I don't know who usually we takes We just the, vote now. Okay. I just need to make one announcement. Is there a Brett Sandberg here? You left your wallet up front. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Any other lost wallets, or should we get back to the motion? <laughs> okay. Um, uh, so there's a motion um, to close the public portion of the debate that was seconded. And so now Maynard just says the roll call. Okay, great. Chairperson Bunny? Aye. Vice Chair Kaplowitz? Aye. Commissioner Sally Perkins? Aye. Uh, motion to make a, uh, to go into working session? Do you want to do that first, or just go to the... Uh, no. We always go into working session now. That's where we talk about the application. Right. Okay. Let's go into it. You have to summon us a second day. Second. There's a motion to go into a working session. Uh, it's been seconded. Maynard? Chairperson Bunny? Aye. Vice Chair Kaplowitz? Aye. Commissioner Sally Perkins? Aye. Okay. The motion carries. And just so everyone knows, we started doing this to be more transparent, so we're talking through our thoughts on the applications instead of just going right into voting. I think that they are members of the community for, for a very long time. They're very productive. They operate a business in the area. They have a good reputation. Their application is, as I said, uh, answered all the questions that normally we would ask. Uh, I think that they would be a good asset to the cannabis business in Jersey City, especially in their location. So I think it would be just we should uh, approve. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. That's my comments. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Glenda? Well, I kind of agree with you, um, Jeff. Um, it's nice to see that it's there in the um, impact area um, to know that um, that – Hopefully that they will definitely um, hire uh, black and brown people, um, and they have been, you know, there for a while. So they have established like good relations with the community and stuff. So I'm, you know, I'm kind of agree with you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. My only concerns, which I've brought up a number of times, is it seems all of these businesses are partnering with the same nonprofits. And so while the board doesn't make recommendations and won't tell you who to work with, I do think it's a bit of a concern to continue to see the same names <coughs> continue to pop up. So um, I do know the health department has a list of over 800 vetted nonprofits in the city of Jersey City. Um, so I would encourage you to look at that list and pick some new names. And I know you mentioned that you hadn't worked through your workforce development plan. I, JSEPT closing, I know, kind of threw a lot of people for a loop, so I'm not going to fault you for that. But I do think that all of the reentry, at least for the county now, goes through Hudson County, through um, Frank Mazza. So 
or the other one that uh, I know of is um, through Governor McGreevy. Yeah. Yeah. Turning point one. Yeah. We found that's the next one. So. But otherwise, I don't have any concerns. Okay. So I motion to close the working session. Second. Chairperson Bunny. Aye. Vice Chair Kaplowitz. Aye. Commissioner Sally Perkins. Aye. I'd like to make a motion to approve CCB 22-30, strictly CBD at 394 Communiport Avenue. Thank you. I second. There's a, a motion to approve that's been seconded. Chairperson Bunny. Aye. Vice Chair Kaplowitz. Good luck. Thank Aye. You. Commissioner Sally Perkins. Aye. Commissioner Sloan is recused and Commissioner Flanagan is absent. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I'm going to grab Ron and he can take his seat back and <laughs> you guys can continue You're on not without having me. Fun? Thanks, folks. Thank you. I think we come back, right? No, I think we come back before we open. Right before we open. No, no, no they're, they're done. done. Uh, no, no, she said You're finished. we can open. Oh, yeah, you come, you come back, back one more. Well, you go to the council. Well, you now. go to the council. And the, have you been in front of the? Obviously, you've been in front of the planning board, uh, or no? I don't have one on. Yeah, we can. Okay, okay. No, then you go to the, the council. Now. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Tom. Oh, good seeing you, babe. Thank you. Thank you. I know. And everything's fine. I know. It was ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was like, Legacy. I'm like, I'm done. Lifted vision. Yeah. I don't see those guys here, so I don't think they're here. The legacy? The, uh, yeah. Lifted vision, they're right there. Um, what do you need? I'm probably rambled. Can we stop the sign? How are you? How do you say it? Yeah.
have, but I. All right. Uh, so it's my understanding if anyone is here for, if anyone is here for the second application, CCB twenty. Oh, he didn't put the recorder on. Maynard, is the uh, recording on? Yes. Oh, thank you. Um, all right. My understanding, uh, CCB 22-26, Legacy to Lift It, is being carried. Uh, it's not being heard at the request of the applicant, so we'll move to, uh, and if anyone is here for that application, you're welcome to attend next month or check the agenda to make sure, in fact, it is on for next month, but that's being carried. Uh, the next application is uh, CCB 22-27, Lifted Vision with Council and uh, the applicant, please approach. It's 481 Central Avenue for a Class 5 retail. Welcome, Mr. Weiss. Nice to see you again. See you, too. Please enter your appearance into the record once you get situated. Thank you. Good evening, uh, Madam Chairwoman, uh, Commissioners, uh, Attorney Mondello. My name is Attorney Mickey Weiss. I'm a partner at Cleary, Giacobbe, Alfieri, and Jacobs, and I'm here on this application uh, representing Lifted Vision, LLC. Uh, Lifted Vision is looking to put up a Class 5 uh, retail license at 481 Central. Uh, it is a women minority business enterprise owned applicant. Uh, although the store is, is tiny, uh, the applicant did not apply to be a micro business. Uh, importantly, uh, at the October uh, CRC meeting, this applicant did receive its conditional approval to operate from the state of New Jersey. Um, and here Congratulations. With me, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And here with me uh, tonight uh, is, is the uh, founding member of Lifted Vision, uh, Jeanette Rodriguez. Any other witnesses testifying on behalf of this application? I, I hope not, but we'll see how it goes. We do have a host of uh, consultants and experts in the event that we need to bring them on, but uh, Ms. Rodriguez is extremely prepared, and um, I think that you'll be happy once you hear from her. For the board's edification, what would be those uh, witnesses? I'm not suggesting the board wants to hear from them, but what are they? I have a operations consultant here from Prohibition Solutions. I have a security uh, consultant here from Cannabis IT, and I have an HR consultant here from uh, Green Harvest HR. Thank you for that. All right, uh, unless there's any questions from the board, uh, we'll start with the first witness. Would you please raise your right hand? Uh -huh. oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I think, again, just the concern at the last meeting was that there was a connection between the two applications, and we had asked Legacy to lift it to confirm that they were not connected, so I think it's only fair to ask this applicant the same question. Let me swear you in first. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear from a testimony about to give you the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you God? I do. Please put your hand down, state your uh, name, spell your last name slowly, and give us your address. My name is Jeanette Rodriguez, R-O-D-R-I-G-U-E-Z. My address is 2020 New York Avenue in Union City, New Jersey. Ms. Rodriguez, you did hear the chair's question that there are concerns that you are, in fact, somehow, some way connected, related to Legacy to Lifted. Would you please respond to the chair's question? Sure. I am not affiliated, associated with that other company, I am responsible for only my company, Lifted Visions. Any other questions from the board with respect to the issue that the chair has just raised? All right, hearing none, seeing none, your witness, Mr. Weiss. I'm going to give it over to Ms. Rodriguez. All right. Thank you, commissioners, for having me here today. I am, I am born and raised in Jersey City. I am first generation Jersey City. I moved to Union City in 2019. Both my parents were born and raised in Puerto Rico, migrated to Jersey City in 1980s. They lived in Jersey City ever since. My mom currently works in New York Presbyterian Hospital. My father no longer works due to health conditions. He, prior to this, he used to work um, construction. Um, he, my father was a big part of the community. He helped his fellow residents with maintenance that needed to be done at home or local businesses around the area. I lived on Central Avenue my whole life, a block away from my 481 Central store location. I 
attended PS27 Elementary and Dickinson High School. After high school, I attended University of Phoenix and majored in business administration and management. I went on to pursue my career in retail management, managing several franchise um, fashion stores, such as Icing and Claire's. Um, admit, pursuing my career, I became a mother. A few years after, I had my second child, eventually having to take on more responsibilities than normal. I was burdened with the everyday struggle of raising two children. Prior to the pandemic, I worked at Alaris Healthcare, um, Alaris Healthcare Center. Since the pandemic, just like many Americans, I was left unemployed. Currently, I bartend private events part time. Um, after giving it many thoughts and putting forth my life savings, I decided to combine my education experience and passion into what I have now created, Lifted Visions. Um, my kids are old enough now where I am able to join the new frontier into the green rush, and that's why I'm here today. Um, any questions about my story before I describe the property? Hearing none, seeing none, please continue. Um, the dispensary is located at 481, 481 Central Avenue in Jersey City Heights. It is a three-story building with retail on the bottom floor and um, retail on the bottom floor and apartments on the top. Um, there is no ample park. There is ample parking on the street, but no on-site parking. Um, there are no daycares, parks, or houses of worship within 200 feet. I have already spoke to all the neighbors and they seem very supportive of the project. Um, I am able, I'm sorry. I am able to make day-to-day -day decisions on my own. I met with Councilman Yusuf Saleh, who told me to meet with his sister, Reina Saleh, who provides self-defense training um, classes for females. Um, I spoke to her and we agreed on sponsoring self-defense training classes for females in that area um, in the heights i grew up in that neighborhood so i want what's best for my local community um, operations the organization is 100 percent latina owned 76 percent women owned um, the hours of operations would be Monday through Sunday from 10 to 10. That all depends on the traffic we get. Uh, sec security will be strategically placed throughout the facility. Ideally, we will have two security guards at all times. I've hired Cannabis IT to install security cameras and my IT stack. We're interviewing engineers for order migration we'll make sure we have carbon filters. We, we've also hired Prohibition Solutions as our operation consultants. We have begun training with Adam, we have begun training with Adam and Mike, who are here today. They have already taught me about inventory intake, tracking with metric, and the flow of operations. We are in discussions with BCB Bank to open a business banking account as well. We would like to have ambient lighting throughout the facility to make sure our customers feel safe going and coming from the facility. Although we are allowed to have more than 10 associates, um, our footage of the store is pretty small. We would do our best to hire as many employees as possible. For hiring salary, we would like to start off at $20 an hour, depending on your position and experience of an individual. For hiring, we will work with Green Harvest HR, a staffing and training agency, local job fairs. We will do advertising and we'll reach out to local cannabis programs for trained applicants. We want to do, we want to hire a diverse talent pool that is Familiar, familiar to the makeup of this great city. We want to make sure we give the right people the right opportunities and we will prioritize in Jersey City residents. 
Uh, I do have an MOU with Governor McGreevy's New Jersey reentry program, and we plan to prioritize hiring from this company, from this program. We'll be giving weekly presentations to new program participants regarding job opportunities at our company. We will collaborate with the reentry program case managers to identify opportunities. We will set an internal target to hire 50% of our workforce from this program. In addition, we have committed to donate money as well. We also have a signed peace labor agreement with the UF, with UFCW, I'm sorry, uh, community engagement. We will have our employees donate time to organizations that need help, such as clothing drives, food drives, and other community events. We want to be a part of the fabric of our community. On October 4th, 2022, we, we held a community get together with a local bakery. We invited the community to attend, everyone enjoy themselves. We were also able to provide food to Jersey City Fire Department and Police Department. Um, my goal and our goal as a community, as an organization, is to be ex an example to our community. Um, I had a rough upbringing growing up, and I want women, especially minority women, to know if you work hard enough, you can achieve your goals. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, right. Um, we're going to need some. Oh, we do have a copy of your uh, New Jersey driver's license, proof of residency. You've already indicated your uh, ethnicity, right? Yes. Um, is that part of the application now? Because some of the applications, I'm actually seeing it. Others, I'm not. We actually have a separate form for everyone, and okay. those have that have applied previously, we've sent it out. So it is going to be part of the file, yes. Uh, Mr. Weiss, if I could trouble you, I will send you this form and instead of getting into all that information. We'll sure. Thank you. All right. We Any are certified minority on business enterprise. We did submit the certification with the local application. Yeah, the, the ordinance requires that uh, I inquire as to um, racial background, ethnicity, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I'm glad it's now part of the application. So. It's just easier to have it on a form. So when we're doing our report, we don't have to go back through all the applications. Yeah, I believe it. they send it to my email and I send it back. I filled it out and send it back. So I'm not sure if you guys have it, but I can send it back to you guys. Thank you. Uh, questions for Ms. Rodriguez from the board? We have two other partners. Where are they? They're, they weren't able to make it. I think one sick and the other one she was like busy still working. So who's going to do oh, I'm sorry. Who's going to do the 24 who's going to be responsible for the 24 hour, you know, you know when people something happens, who's the contact person? That would be me. Okay. And you said that you you you've um, you have an MOU from Mr. McGreevy. Is there other other any other agencies that you're working with as far as um, doing your hiring? Um, for or hiring, for hiring, we would be working with Green Harvest HR. is a training It's a training and staffing agency. We would also do um, local like advertising for hiring as well. Anything else from uh, board members with respect to the testimony that Ms. Rodriguez has given? I think you said you want to do clothing drives, food drives, and community events. Can Have you partnered with anyone, or do you have any organizations that you've identified? Um, at the moment, no. I've... Now with the holidays coming up, um, I know my councilman is doing toy drives, so I am... Looking forward to working with him and Thanksgiving as well, doing uh, like a turkey giveaway or something in that nature for my community. Any other questions from board members? 
All right, at this point, uh, we'd open it up to the public for questions and questions only on Ms. Rodriguez's testimony thus far. Hearing none, seeing none. Is the board inclined to hear any other witness testimony at this juncture? Hearing none, seeing none. Are there, other uh, there can be. Mr. Weiss had indicated that he has an arsenal of uh, other witnesses. If need be, he is prepared to call those witnesses. And I'm sorry, could you please repeat? He oh. said he has an operations consultant, a security consultant, and an HR consultant. Thank you. I also didn't think that it was necessary, but if you want to hear some of the minutia, we're happy to bring them up here. But I thought Ms. Rodriguez was able to touch on uh, all the salient points, and I think that she can answer any questions that you may have by herself without the help of those consultants. So the two consultants are not owners? No. Solely? They're training okay. to make sure everybody's up to speed on compliance issues. Mm -hmm. All right, then, what is the uh, board's pleasure? Uh, either we could hear from one of the three witnesses, as the chair just indicated, or we could bring it back uh, for uh, a discussion. We could ask Mr. Weiss to sum up. What is the board's pleasure? I don't have a problem with the summary. Mr. Weiss? Sure. Um, uh, as, as I said at the beginning, um, Ms. Rodriguez was uh, born and raised in Jersey City. Uh, women, minority, certified enterprise business has received a conditional approval from the state of New Jersey. She has worked incredibly hard over the past few months training with her consultants. Um, quite frankly, I haven't seen anybody work as hard, um, really learning to understand the business. She's putting in the work. She has put in the work. She wants to be a representative um, and a positive impact and a role model to her community. Um, she deserves and the Lifted Vision team deserves uh, this approval here tonight so that they can move forward and convert this license so they can open up in the Heights where she grew up. Thank you, Mr. Weiss. Back to the board for a discussion or a motion, either for uh, or against the application. Are either of the other owners Jersey City residents? Yes. Um, Pedro Rodriguez, he lives on Nelson on Jersey City Avenue, 37 Nelson. In Jersey City Avenue, um, Samara, she used to, not no more. Uh, we did do. Uh, oh, um, all right, we'll open it up for public comment. I'm sorry. Um, anyone have any comments, either for or against this uh, application? Thank you for reminding me. Hearing none, seeing none, we'd close that portion and bring it back to the dais. Can we just go right to a motion at this point? You can. You certainly can. Well, I thought we were doing a working session for every applicant. Now. Can do that. It's at the board's pleasure. You can do either one. Okay. What is the board's pleasure? Motion to go into... Well, let me ask a question. Does anybody really want to say anything in the work session regarding this? If right, not, so, I'll go right to a motion. All right, so then it would be uh, a waste of time. All right, that's fine. State your motion. Um, I'd like to make a motion to approve CCB 22-27 Lifted Vision LLC at 481 Central Avenue. Is there a second? Is there a second? Second a motion to... It's to approve, approve this application. Second a motion to approve the application. All right, that's a yes. It's a seconded yes. by Courtney. Roll call. Chairperson Bunny. Uh, I'm going to abstain. Vice Chair Kaplowitz. I vote yes. Commissioner Sally Perkins. <clears throat> I vote yes, but <clears throat> I'm hoping that um, that... Even with Mr. McGreevy's um, connection that, you know, that you kind of hire from, you know, our impact area, which is, you know, um, 07, 304, and 05. 
So. <laughs> so you've heard the, the commissioner. Any objection to that being a condition? It's a reasonable condition that you take all efforts to try to hire within this particular district, as Glenda has indicated. Yes. No, oh, thank you. Commissioner Sloan? I vote no. Okay. Commissioner Flanagan is absent. All right. Uh, so uh, the motion does carry with two votes. Thank you. Best of luck. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. With the board's permission, the next application is CCB 22-31 Chill Town Dispensary. Yeah. Would the applicant and uh, council please approach? And once you're settled, counselor, please enter your appearance into the record. I'm going to ask for a brief summary with respect to what the application is and who the witnesses are this evening. Sure, thank you. Uh, Nicholas Trammy appearing for the applicant, Chilltown Dispensary, LLC. Um, this evening, the applicant is uh, looking for support for a Class 5 uh, retail license and consumption license. I understand that it's the board's uh, 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 process to bifurcate both of those licenses. Uh, so uh, before you this evening is the Class 5 uh, retail application. Uh, proposed location is 326 Central Avenue. Uh, that's in Ward D. The space is approximately 3,286 square feet. Uh, the applicant has an executed lease agreement for the space. Um, the company, uh, Chilltown Dispensary LLC, is owned entirely by Jared Pollock and Michael Carbone. Uh, the application has received conditional approval from the state of New Jersey. Um, uh, Jared is here. He'll discuss a little bit more uh, about his history and some other concepts related to the application. Uh, Michael uh, is uh, a veteran and unfortunately unable to attend this evening. He is receiving cancer treatments uh, in Florida. Jared does have a statement that he'll read into the record from Michael. Um, beyond that, uh, the applicant has engaged with Sapphire Risk Advisory Group um, for uh, security at the proposed location. Uh, the applicant is also proposing to engage a retired Jersey City police officer as head of security for the location. There is a plan, uh, the pending rather, Jersey City Planning Board application for the space. Uh, and I think that sums up our current status. Without further ado, I'll uh, hand it over to Jared. Good evening, sir. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear from a testimony about to give you the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you God? I do. You can put your hand down. Please state your name, spell your last name, give us your address. Jared Pollard, P O L L A R D, 393 Hartford Road, South Orange, New Jersey. Your witness, counselor. All right, thank you. Uh, Jared, would you tell the board a little bit about uh, your application? Absolutely. Good evening, commissioners. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to briefly present to you some background on Chilltown Dispensary. Chilltown Dis Dispensary is a certified New Jersey minority business enterprise whose ownership is made up of a disabled veteran and an African American, both with long ties to Jersey City. The company named Chilltown pays homage to Jersey City's historic nickname and is reflective of the local roots of the ownership. I moved to Jersey City almost 20 years ago, right after graduating college. I was able to save enough money from working in the summers during school to buy a small fixer-upper on the west side. And little did I know at the time that this would be the start of a long and eventful investment track record in Jersey City. After working on a few small projects on the west side and McGinley Square, I started my real estate development firm, and we continue to build today in the very same Heights neighborhood that we're looking to open up our dispensary. My partners and I have collectively built dozens of homes in Jersey City Heights and have supported numerous charities in this area, which we will touch on in a bit. Although my family and I recently moved out of Jersey City during the pandemic, we still very much consider it home. I was raised by a single black mom after an unexpected death of my father, and so I'm well aware of the obstacles that many of the families in the city face. I was given a second chance as a teen and continue to benefit from several community organizations helping me to preserve, persevere to ultimately get an MBA from an Ivy League institution. 
This is why my partner and I decided very early on to partner with the New Jersey Reentry Program, where we have committed to hiring at least 10% of our staff from, in addition to our annual financial commitment, to ensure that the legalization of cannabis is not only creating opportunities for big corporations, but also creating reparations for those communities that were most harmed by the punitive justice system. We've also decided to expand our longstanding relationship with Kids First, a local nonprofit in the Heights that aims at providing youth with opportunities for productive development through recreation and extracurricular activities. Before I go any further, I'd like to read a prepared statement from my partner, Michael Carbone, who was unable to attend today due to his current battle with lung cancer. One second. <clears throat> uh, does the board have any objection uh, of this witness reading in a statement from Mr. Carbone? It's very unusual that a statement would be read in because we can't ask him questions. We can't cross-examine him. The public can't cross-examine him. They can't ask questions. But this appears to be a unique situation as, unfortunately, Mr. Carbone suffers from cancer and is involved with uh, uh, some kind of cancer treatment. Is that right. correct? So it, it is an unusual situation. Normally, I would not permit something like this to occur. But what is the board's pleasure with respect to that? Any objection? Not from Hearing me. none, seeing none, please continue. Thank you. Thanks, Ron. Jersey City Cannabis Control Board. I would not be able to attend the Cannabis Control Board meeting on November 14th, 2020, on behalf of my partnership of Chilltown Dispensary, LLC. My partner, Jared Pollard, who is the majority partner in the business, will represent the partnership at the CCB meeting. Last year, I was diagnosed with stage three left lung cancer. I've been getting treatment from the Veterans Administration located at the West Palm Beach VA Hospital. I've attached my assessment and plan for treatment of my left lung cancer. I've also attached my schedule showing the dates and times of my treatment, which includes CT scans on 11-9, blood tests on 11-10, and infusion on 11-16. Since my diagnosis, I've been taking cannabis edibles for my pain. Because of this, I've grown very interested in the cannabis industry, wanting to help people with cancer and going through some form of pain management. I'd like to provide the commissioners with some brief background on myself. I was born in Jersey City in the Margaret Haig Hospital. Growing up in the Heights section of Jersey City, only a few blocks from our proposed dispensary site, I attended PS27, Dickerson High School, and St. Peter's College. I worked for the Jersey City Redevelopment Agency and the Jersey City Building Department before I opened an expediting company called Transact Consulting Corp where I filed and processed plans and permits for approvals for major projects such as the Harborside, the Merrill Lynch Building, and the Goldman Sachs Building. I've done a lot of work in Jersey City community over the decades. I'm most proud of my work with the Ray of Hope Foundation, which helps children, families, and people that are unable to care for themselves. Furthermore, I'm a 100% disabled veteran, and I've joined the American League and the DAV, and it helped these two organizations for many years. I'm committed to hiring local disabled veterans and minorities at Chilltown Dispensary because it's personal for us to ensure that this industry lifts marginalized groups and legalization creates opportunities for folks in the community. Any questions before I go forward? All right. I'd now like to focus the remainder of my remarks on three essential areas, community impact, workforce development, and security. Chilltown recognizes its responsibility to ensure a positive, collaborative, and authentic partnership with the community. At Chilltown, we take our commitment to integrating with the local community seriously since we're already part of it. That is why we decided to formalize our existing relationship with the New Jersey Reentry Corp, which is a nonprofit agency with a social mission to remove all barriers to employment for citizens returning from jail or prison. The New Jersey Reentry Corp also has a veterans justice outreach initiative that Chilltown will be getting involved with. Our co commitment goes beyond our MOU revenue share and hiring commitments. We will also be working with the New Jersey Reentry Program in collaboration with a local attorney to offer free expungement services to their participants as well as our customers and neighbors. This is important to us because folks have fallen victim to the imbalances of the justice system and they deserve a second chance similar to how I received one, because without it, I wouldn't be sitting in front of you today. Chilltown will be working also with Ohm Life, a Jersey City-based wellness center, to host quarterly educational events for our customers and neighbors. These seminars will cover various holistic approaches to wellness, which we believe this community can greatly benefit from. 
When reaching out to our neighbors to hear their concerns and suggestions, one idea that came up that we received was tapping into the local artist community for commissioning murals for the dispensary. And we've spoken to our architect about integrating this into our plans because we think this cl collaboration with local artists could be a key component of our culture at Chilltown. Oftentimes, those most impacted by the criminal justice system are inner city youth who either come in direct contact with law enforcement or have had their family impacted by the system. Mm -hmm. Most of my current and prior charitable work has centered around un underserved youth. I've worked with the Hudson County Boys and Girls Club, the Jersey City Anti-Violence Coalition Movement, the Mary Bethune Center, the Big Brothers and Big Sisters of Hudson County, underperforming students at PS3 and PS17 schools, uh, and Kids First. With respect to Kids First, I've been volunteering and sponsoring their tour drives uh, during the holidays, and we're currently working with the president on future initiatives, one being that we would like to focus on improving the relationship between the youth and the local police department, specifically the North Precinct, which is only one block away from our site. We believe that this is a much needed first step in bridging the divide, and we feel an obligation to be a catalyst. Once we are open, uh, if given the privilege, we'll continue to identify these types of partnerships within the Heights community because we understand that it's imperative that we have a strong pulse on what matters most to the community and that we're not haphazardly throwing money around to see what sticks. We're aiming for a long-term sustainable impact that aligns with the community's interests and needs. Now turning to workforce development. As a minority-owned business, we recognize that the repercussions of the war on drugs still reverberates within the disadvantaged communities today. And that is why we will recruit and employ social equity individuals, including individuals who are formerly incarcerated for nonviolent offenses. We plan to hire approximately 18 employees with at least 10% coming from the New Jersey Reentry Program, as previously mentioned. We're also working with the New Jersey Reentry Program to ensure that all of their participants that we hire get to participate in one of the Hudson County Community College's cannabis certificate programs. Lastly, we will be working with the Hudson County Workforce Development Board as an additional partner to help us identify local talent with the goal of obtaining at least 80% of our team from Jersey City. We want to make certain that Chill the Chilltown team reflects the diversity of its ownership and of the Heights community. This is imperative for the company. We have been in touch with American Legion, which Mike has ties to, uh, about partnering with them to identify veteran candidates. And lastly, we have partnered with Women Grow, which is a national organization focused on introducing, uniting, and promoting women in the cannabis industry. We have a long-standing relationship with the leadership at Women Grow, and they're excited to work with us on our ambitious diversity goals. At Chilltown, we plan to offer the following professional development plans to ensure our employees' advancement and retention. Continuing training and education sessions, increase duties and responsibilities uh, via one-on-one -on -one mentorships, professional organizations and seminar participation, such as attending conferences and workshops hosted by partner organizations, ongoing diversity training, and paid time off uh, for local volunteer work to ensure the Chill Chilltown team is collectively paying it forward. Now on to security. Lastly, I'd like to briefly outline some of our security plans for Chilltown. We've engaged Tony Gallo at Sapphire Risk Advisory Group and Roberto Doring at ISIN, who are two of the most respected security consultants in the industry. Over the last eight years, Sapphire has designed security programs for over 70 cannabis facilities in 35 states, including New Jersey. ISIN is an award-winning security device and monitoring firm that has taken our plans and have layered them with state-of-the-art security devices and lighting to create a safe and secured environment for our staff customers and neighbors. We will also establish a positive working relationship with the Jersey City Police Department, particularly with the North Precinct, which is again one block away. Uh, Jim McGreevy uh, wanted to attend this evening to uh, speak on our behalf, uh, but he sent a letter because he wasn't able to make it, so I could present that um, to you guys. 
Oh, that's probably the MOU. Um, separately, he presented a letter, um, you know, speaking on our behalf uh, in stand of him not being able to make it this evening. So I could give you guys a copy of that if, if you would like. Um, but in closing, we are a minority-owned local group that is from the community and has the support of the community as demonstrated from the letters of support from Mayor Fulop, Councilman Soleil, local charities, and over 30 neighbors. We hope that we have demonstrated our preparedness and passion for this venture. And I want to thank the commissioners for their time this evening and throughout the entire process and happy to take any questions. So, I'm sorry, may I jump in real quick? Uh, so, Mr. Pollard, I'm, I'm looking, congratulations, but I'm looking at the award from uh, the CRC and it's addressed to Jared Jackson. And I just don't see that anywhere on the application with uh, a Jersey City address. Yeah, that was a typo from them. Um, that's my middle name. Okay. So that's just a typo. Thank you for clearing that up. Sure. Appreciate that. Jared, um, there was somewhere in the application that you were talking about being a consumption lounge. Is that still what? Yeah, we're, we're, it's in the plans, but we're not going to discuss it tonight because my understanding is that you guys want to bifurcate the process. The regulations are still pending. Um, so we, what, I guess at some point come back, um, should those regulations be put in place. That is correct. We're waiting for the state to issue their guidelines. Questions, other questions for Mr. Pollard on the testimony that he has given thus far? Hearing none, see. Who is the 24-hour contact? Uh, that would be me. It's a great question. <laughs> I mean, the process is so long, right? Um, we have our conditional license in place. Uh, then we have to finalize our local approvals. So we have to go to the planning board, um, which we attempted to go to before, but then they changed the order. Um, so now we have to go to them after the CCB if we're granted approval. Then we have to go to the city council. Uh, then we'll be able to submit to back to the state for our conversion. Um, then we will have the ability to um, you know, start the work of opening and then have the state come back in and reassess to give our, their final approval. So it's anyone's guess how long that will take, but um, you know, if I had to guess, it would be 9 to 12 months from now. Um, so, so, Glenda, what, what, what happens is, and that's correct, uh, once the state awards um, this business, the actual or converts it from a conditional, which is probationary, to a regular state license, you have a year to build out. And then the state will actually come in and inspect, and that's when they will get their license from the state, the final license that they will put in some type of a frame. Okay. Right. So it could actually be more than that, nine months to a year. Any other questions from the board members? I have a question, but I'm looking something up. Sure. You guys can keep asking. Anything, nothing else from the board? Uh, with the board's permission, I'll open it up for questions and questions only from the uh, folks in the audience as to the testimony that Mr. Pollard has given thus far. Hearing none, seeing none. Back to the board for any additional questions. Are there any other witnesses this evening, Mr. Joseph? Uh, uh, I'm Nick Tarami. I'm, I'm oh, sorry. That's I just right. pulled the, the, no the, problem. from the <laughs> Okay. Uh, no. All right. <clears throat> well, why don't we do this uh, while the chair's looking? Um, We'll open up to the public for any comments for or against this application. Good evening, sir. Would you please uh, raise your right hand? Do you score from the testimony about to give the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So, help you got. I heard public comment. Sorry, that, okay. It's testimony. Yep. Uh, it is testimony, so we swear you in. It's for or against the application. Okay. You can put your hand down, and uh, what's your name? And spell your last name, and give us your address. Uh, my name is Tom Donahue. I'm from UFCW Local 360. 
Oh, you're uh, taking over for you. Uh, he couldn't make it tonight, so he asked me to come up. Uh, I'm the director of the cannabis division. I'm here to speak in favor of Chilltown Dispensary. They do have an LPA with uh, UFCW Local 360. Uh, they, we believe that they will be a good partner going forward, creating good jobs in Jersey City. So we would like you to consider them. He trained you well. Thank you for that. Anyone else? Come on up. Did you, do you have your question ready? Yeah. Uh, hold on no, a sec. No, he could go first. Okay, That's come fine. on up, sir. Would you uh, uh, All right, I see you got a speech <laughs> there. Please raise your right hand. This were for him, the testimony about to give you the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God. So help me God, yes. You can put your hand down. Please state your name. My spell name your last Bill. name and give us your address. Yes, my name is Billy I Rodolfos. I reside currently at 150 Central Lane. Can you hear me? I can. Seacork is New Jersey, 07094. I'm here to speak in favor of the applicant. I got it. I know Jared and Michael and their families for roughly five years now. They have both been nothing but good to me and my family. I'm a single father who raises my child, my daughter, 100% of the time. At my worst time in my life, getting divorced, single dad, when no one wanted to even be my friend. Jared and Michael both welcomed me with open arms. They both volunteered their time, their money, helping others. How do I know this? They have helped me in my time of need. I can't say enough about Jared and Michael, as they are true blue. I have nothing but praise for them both. I honestly feel they will be an asset to Jersey City and the community as they have been in the past and continue to be. I also build facilities for the NJRC. I have a very small time frame to finish them and to bring the prisoners out and have a place to learn a trade and to get placed in a decent paying job. I have been working for Governor McGreevy and his staff, and it is an honor, and this has to be one of the most giving programs I've ever seen in my entire life. Governor McGreevy has done an outstanding job building the program. I believe it's now bigger than as many prisoners as we have in jail. I think it's bigger than that at this point. I, I bring this up only because they needed five metal rolling gates at the end, and we didn't have the funding. I reached out to Jared and Michael, and they helped me with the funding to finish the job for the New Jersey Reentry Program. So I can attest to all of this. These guys are just top quality, caring, and selfless guys. And with that, I'll end. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Good evening. Would you be so kind as to raise your right hand? Do you swear from the testimony about to give you the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you got? I do. Can you put your hand down? Please state your name, spell your last name, and give us your address. Crystal Potts. Last name is P-O-T-T-S. My address is Fort Beacon Way. Fort Beacon Way, Jersey City, New Jersey. I just want to say that I've known Jared for over 10 years now. Um, I met him at the Beacon. Um, at the Rialto Capital Condominiums. Um, him and I served on the condo association together. He was the president of the condo association. I was the vice president of the association. Um, with that, I will say that um, I am 66 years old, and you say you can't, tr you can't teach an old dog new tricks. I will say that's a lie. You don't look old to me. I, that's a lie. <laughs> I learned so much from this young man. Um, he is um, such an inspiration. Um, he was able to corral a herd of cats with the group of owners who had very different ideas about what the condo should be doing. Um, he was able to get everyone on board in terms of the direction that we should be going. Um, in terms of community organization and engagement. He had the foresight to say, listen, we have to really get involved in the community. He reached out and made sure that we had community events in terms of getting out the 
uh, voter registration drives and getting people engaged to know that this is something that we needed to do to really get out, get our voices out. He knew to get us out in terms of getting in terms of the, the businesses in in the neighborhood so that the businesses, these new mom and pop businesses, would would know about the Beacon community and we would hold social events with these mom and pop shops. He knew enough to know that um, we need to we needed also to have some vision in terms of how do we keep ourselves afloat in terms of the, the community itself. He knew that the the beacon was growing and that we needed a deli on on the premises itself and we wanted a deli and we would we did not want a Starbucks we wanted a mom and pop deli so we wanted a deli that would represent the community so that the community would have a deli on the premises itself in terms of commercial space that deli would represent the, the various ethnic background that we had within within the within um, the development he also knew that we had in terms of uh, revenue streams that we had some commercial space, but we knew that we had owners and residents there, so we wanted to get a tenant in there that would realize that we didn't want a lot of foot traffic. So making sure that we got a resident, uh, we got an owner in there that would take take into account that this was a place that people live. So we got someone with very low foot traffic. He also made sure that in terms of the roof, we put antennas on the roof to, to generate an income. So we typically limit it to three minutes. I would just respectfully ask that you wind down. Okay. I will just say you couldn't get a better person than Jared. I mean, this is someone with so much integrity, so much vision. Um, I, I couldn't, you couldn't ask for a better person than him, so I'm going to end it on that. But just a great individual, a great family person as well. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Hearing none, seeing none, would close that portion of the public's uh, comments. And back to I'm, the yeah. chair. I figured out the answer. Okay. All right. Uh, there are no other witnesses. If you want to spend a, a minute or two summing up, and then we'll come back to the board to see, see if they have any other questions, discussion, motion. Um, sure. Uh, I you think don't the, need to sum up if you don't want <laughs> I was to. just going to say I do believe the uh, application is self-evident. We can certainly rely on the testimony that you've heard this evening. But uh, just as a point of personal preference, I will say that uh, this particular applicant has been uh, extremely organized buttoned up and it's it's been a real pleasure to work with them and we hope the board uh responds to that favorably thank you back to the board either a motion to go into work session or if you think that is uh, unnecessary or duplicative a motion for or against can i just ask one question of course um do you have any any other contacts besides uh, mr mcgreevy as far as for hiring is concerned did you make any other contacts? Yes. Um, so we're working towards um, leveraging the Veterans Administration um, around being able to uh, bring in uh, veteran candidates um, and then also the um, Hudson County um, Workforce Development Organization uh, in terms of being able to bring in local um, candidates so um, hi hi <laughs> so you are are you still currently involved in doing the real estate development yes so and will you be I know earlier you said you would be the 24-hour contact person as well so who, will it be you that will sort of handle the day-to-day -day or your partner or how, what does that look like? In yeah, terms good of question. Um, so we're in the process of working with uh, Global Go, um, which is a, a cannabis consulting firm, to identify a general manager um, mm -hmm. for the operation. But it's a little bit of a chicken and an egg uh, situation, right? It's hard to really talk to folks um, in any um, serious way until you are further down the path but at least we're starting to kind of figure out what type of candidate our preference would be someone from new jersey um with um medicinal experience obviously because it's not going to be 
many people with um, recreational experience, but um, trying to find a general manager with medicinal cannabis experience that will eventually become the day to day uh, contact. Um, but uh, at the um, onset, it would be me, um, and hopefully, very shortly thereafter, we would have the general manager in place uh, to to run twenty four seven. Mm-hmm. So why medicinal if this is an adult use mm-hmm. dispensary? I just don't think if we're going to try to find locally in New Jersey, I don't think there's that many uh, folks from what I'm from what I understand and speaking to our consultants um, and just going to networking events, um, you know, like 420 Connect and others that I've been to. There's not a lot of people with adult use experience in the state because we're just starting to open it. Right. So. Um, so it's not to say it has to be medicinal, but I think there's a larger candidate pool that um, that has been operating um, or has some experience working in dispensaries uh, in the medicinal space. Otherwise, we could easily pull someone from another state uh, that has recreational experience. But the the experience and from an operational perspective um, is very much um, aligned. You know, there's. A lot of their protocols are probably even higher standards than uh, in some of the adult use guidelines. So uh, I think that would be, you know, a good way of getting a larger candidate pool for the general manager position. But we'll certainly look at folks um, to the extent that they moved to Colorado, got the adult use experience and then moved back to New Jersey. Like they would absolutely be um, looked at as well. I only ask the question because we have had uh cannabis business applicants before us who were so high, pardon the pun, uh, to help (laughs) medical patients that they, even though it was an adult use facility, they even dedicated one cashier for medical patients. So that's the only reason why I asked Mm. that question. Mm. Interesting. Any questions from the board? Mm. All right. So hearing none, seeing none again, either a motion to go into closed session to discuss this. If you think that is unnecessary, then either a motion for or against this application. Motion to go into working session. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. No opposed. All right, we are in work session. My concern is the same concern I had with downtown, which is the number that we're approving on Central Avenue. I think there's a, I don't think any street in Jersey City should be um, filled with an abundant number of cannabis dispensaries. And I do think, I'm just stating it on the record that I do think um, there are a lot of applications on Central Avenue. So what are your cross streets? Um, It would be Griffith and Central. Griffith and Central. So (laughs) what we have... Brittany. No, I know the number. I just we're not supposed to discuss other applications. But in terms of the locations of where things are, is what it looks like. So yeah, there are others um, on that street. I don't disagree with the statement, but yeah, the council it's didn't you know put in their ordinance I agree. a limitation of number. There is a problem, as you stated, with Newark Avenue and Central Avenue in particular of this, but it's not in the ordinance. I don't know, you know, if it's right for us to deny someone who's gone through all the, you know, checks and balances to create a application, start a business, and then say, well, even though it's not in the ordinance, you know, it's too crowded, so we're not going to allow it. Well, well, it, it does system. say we are supposed to look at the number within a thousand feet of each other. The ordinance specifically states that. Right, but we've not. I can read it for you right now. It says the number of cannabis establishments within close proximity less than one thousand feet to the applicant. Just because a cannabis establishment is less than a thousand feet from your application is not necessarily a negative factor. Each application must be evaluated on the totality of factors in the surrounding neighborhood. Right. I think there's like four all in this same two block radius. Well, Charles Thorne. So, so to answer your question, true. Jeff, you, I mean, it certainly can be taken into <laughs> consideration either from a positive point or a negative point. 
just so all the board members know, that's why I supplied everyone with a map. The map, And yeah. the map is, is really pinpointing where uh, applicants have been approved by the council. Mm -hmm. And that's really what, that's the, the pin in the map. It's kind of yeah. the buzzword that we're using. That's what it's been pinned in the map. So those are the locations you should be concerned about. Yeah, it's very useful. So you really see it. Again, you know, it, I don't disagree with, you know, the stacking of cannabis businesses in small areas. But, you know, we have all these applications and, you know, it's kind of unfair for a minority-owned business now to be said, oh, hey, too many. But at the same time, it, it's, it's a competitive landscape. I mean, it's not as if, yeah, I mean, it's like any other business, right? You're a restaurant, what's your menu, what's your menu? And it's up to them now to have to be competitive, um, sourcing the product and doing whatever there is to do as far as being a business owner in a retail store. Right. So I don't think that's on us necessarily, the locations of the spaces. I am concerned, um, as you are, but I... <coughs> I just think that, you know, the council, if they, they, and this is a problem, but the council should amend their ordinance that says only X number of units should be in any given area. I agree. Because then becomes arbitrary on our side. Well, I agree, and that's part of what I wanted to speak about, just to get more understanding. But I, yeah, I, 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 I. <clears throat> Any other discussion while we are in the work session? I'll take that as a no. Uh, motion to go back into the regular session. Is there, is there a second? Yeah, I second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? All right. Back to the board for a motion either for or against the application. Mm -hmm. I'll make a motion to approve. Um, CCB 22-31, um, Chilltown Dispensary at 326 Central Avenue to approve. Is there a second? A second. Roll call. Chairperson Bunny. Uh, abstain. Vice Chair Kaplowitz. I vote yes. Commissioner Sally Perkins. I vote yes. Commissioner Sloan. I vote yes. Commissioner Flanagan is absent. Yep, motion carries. Congratulations. Best of luck. Thank you. Thank you. Stacy is going to be here any minute, so we're going to wait and take a break until she's here. All right. Yeah, of course. Why are you Because. Well, the first one said Yusuf said to talk to his sister. I work for Yusuf. I obviously had to refuse myself or abstain. And the second one, I have an issue with the nonprofit. And I've abstained on every single one that that nonprofit is tied to. And the law department is aware of. So when you, when you abstain, <clears throat> yeah. typically it goes along with the majority. No, I know. I yield back to the board. A, I know. Versus Correct. a I know. Yeah. But I can't refuse myself you didn't halfway know. through. Correct. You could. you could. Yeah, go ahead. The applicant has some very mellow Oh, right. He's, uh, he's, he's in the back there. there. They just don't want to spend the money. I, I have to get an answer about that from the law department. and. Tom said that it should be heard. Yeah. Then they can do it. It's just like any other application. They're disclosing it. So should I just simply tell him he can be heard, or do you want him well, to approach the mic at some point? Uh, what we're talking about is... I know, but why is the brother asking the question and not the applicant? That's the one thing I didn't understand. I don't know. I think he might be... No, the parents are the property owner, but... Well, you can ask this question. He is? He's an attorney. 
So they're going to put in separate applications. Well, Which we can't pleasure. say what the board will do if we'll shoot him down or not. Down. But just wants to be heard, yes or no. Uh, yes, you know, uh, he just wants to know. But I was of the opinion, and so was Tom, that at a minimum they need to be heard. Whether or not they have to be away, but we're going to wait for her. So. Yeah, that's that's a situation. Can I just tell her? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure we'll get many more. Yeah. My opinion was that they should be heard, and so was Tom's. But the board could say they could ignore both of us. I'm guessing that they do. Ready? I gotta recuse myself. Good evening. Ron. All right, uh, the meeting is uh, called to uh, order and let the record reflect that uh, Stacy has arrived. It is now 7.05. The next application is CCB 22-32 and uh, uh, Jeffrey Kap Kapowitz has recused himself. Uh, Lady L. Cannabis, 547 West Side Avenue, Class 5 Retail. It's nice to see you again, Ms. Patel. Please enter your appearance into the record and give us a brief summary uh, with respect to this application. Sure. Thank, thank you. Good evening. My name is Shirali Patel on behalf of Blaze Law Firm, representing the applicant, Lady L. Cannabis, LLC, uh, or Liliana, Lily as I call her. She is a local Jersey City resident. Her company received a conditional license from the state of New Jersey on July 28th of 2022. She has since then secured her building, which she owns outright, and she's in the process of hopefully obtaining approval from you guys tonight so that she can move forward with her conversion process, and I'll let Lily speak for herself for the application. Before you do that, yes. you just indicated that your client owns the building because, I, I, and I know the form may not, uh, the actual uh, application form may not indicate it, but I didn't see a lease. Does this deed indicate that uh, since you own the, the uh, property that you're going to be leasing it to this business or... So, because it's in your name? Yeah, so the, the LLC that she created is uh, Jersey Dream that's LLC. Right. That's Jersey City, Dream. Jersey City Dream LLC. So that's the company that holds the real estate, which is her, and she's going to lease it to Lady Al Cannabis. So we have to do the lease still. All right. Okay, fantastic. Please raise your right hand. This we're from the testimony about to give you the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you God. I do. You can put your hand down. Please state your name, spell your last name, and give us your address. Certainly. Good evening, everyone. My name is Liliana Holland, L-I-L-I-A-N-A, H-O-L-L-A-N-D-T, residing at 23 Emory Street, Jersey City, New Jersey, 07304. Thank so you for that. Just right the block. Thank, the block. You. Thank you. Your witness, counselor. Sure. So, Lily, I'm going to have you go over yeah. your, your application and we'll, we'll give a Certainly. chance for questions later. So, just a little bit about myself. Um, I am in the process of building my own version of the American Dream, hopefully tonight, one step closer. Um, I arrived in the United States in 1999 at the age of 24, born and raised in communist Bulgaria. So this is Eastern Europe with $500 in my pocket. I left um, everything I knew and held dear behind because I believed that there is something bigger and better and it's on this side of the ocean. Um, my background um, is a small but tight-knit family. My parents owned um, small retail spaces. This is where I got my first job at the age of 13 or 14 um, and rose through the ranks, all of three employees, managed them at 15 because I really found a passion for customer service, storytelling, really meeting people and figuring out their, their lives, their stories, their dreams, you know, um, and also learning the ropes of a business. Although I never ended up in business administration, I hold a degree in journalism and mass communication as well as um, English literature, although that didn't go anywhere. Um, I have also background in um, marketing and I've been working in the field of marketing for the past 20 years 
particularly in the marketing field for pharmaceutical companies, um, working very closely with their legal and regulatory bodies. Um, so I'm very familiar about how legal and regulatories, you know, play a role in any business. Outside of that, very comfortable managing businesses, um, client budgets of upwards of millions and millions of dollars, um, managing small and large teams. Um, but in the meantime, really thinking, how do I get close to my, my dream, you know? Is it working for a pharmaceutical company or is it building something better, bigger and better? And um, I've been a participant in my community. I've been a Jersey City resident for the past 10 years and a participant in my community since pretty much day one. I've built a home here. I'm married. I have a 18, almost 18 month old baby. Um, I have a son and I do believe that we belong here. It's a privilege to be a resident of Jersey City, and I also want to say that it is a privilege to hold a cannabis license. I don't take this lightly. I fully understand that it is important, um, and it represents not just myself, but but the business and the uh, Jersey City. So with this said, the vision for the business um, located at 547 Intended, location uh, 547 Westside Avenue, um, 07304, is uh, to really represent the mission statement of Lady L Cannabis. It's a small but but mighty space, soulful, what we like in square footage. Um, it's currently about 640 square feet of public access space and about 160 square feet of uh, pretty much limited access to public, so a little bit less than 800 square feet. We're going to make up by really servicing the community um, based on uh, acceptance and education. Education is at the front and center of this business, uh, particularly supporting the female part of, of the community, the women, the mothers, the grandmothers, um, really the pillars of, of our community who are tasked with raising our children, uh, who may lack the support or the knowledge to really um, pass down that knowledge and cannabis or learning about cannabis is part of it. Um, in terms of security, we're working with, or I am working as the, I don't know why I keep saying we, since I'm the 100% owner and CEO of the business we, or working with a uh, SAP buyer, um, Tony Gallo, well-known. risk yeah. advisory yeah. group. Sapphire Risk Advisory Group, Tony Gallo. There's a plan in place. I'm not going to go into detail, but um, all aspects of the security have been thought through for the interiors as well as the exterior. We believe that um, it's actually going to bring more safety to the neighborhood. It's a neighborhood uh, commercial zone. Lots of traffic, lots of interest, lots of pedestrian traffic as well. Um, believe that by adding additional lightning as well as lights, uh, light systems, as well as cleaning up uh, the sidewalks, rebuilding the sidewalks, and committing to bettering the uh, exteriors of the uh, exterior of the place will actually benefit the community. There is really no expected, you know, adverse event to um, the, the neighborhood or the neighboring real estate. We don't expect that. Um, the prices of the uh, real estate in the area will be going up because of the opening of Lady L Cannabis, LLC. Um, so if you have any questions around the security, please let me know. I'm very well versed since this is my store and my business, uh, but obviously not the expert, and I'm working very closely with them. Um, as part of the process, I've already started developing the SOPs. There are tons of them. Um, and can assure that um, the SOPs touch upon the environmental impact, um, you know, the diversion, uh, checking IDs, um, anything and everything that state requires. So all of this has already been thought through. From a um, job opportunities and creation standpoint, um, the goal is to first look local and hire local, working closely with... Um, so there, there will be a two-prong approach, actually. Um, the job market or the job fair really proved successful based on what we saw. I think that this is a great um, avenue to really hire local, diverse talent. Um, I've also been um, 
listening to a, a lot of the candidates before me in the past months, and um, I failed to hear education and training as part of, of the rest of, you know, the applications, and this is what we're going to do, really train the minimum of eight hours per employee uh, within the first 30 days of starting. Um, so local job fair, as well as I'm in close contact with the uh, Jersey City um, Probation Division with uh, Ms. Kimberly Mack. Um, it takes a little bit of time. We're looking for opportunities to really extend offers to their clients who are from the zip codes 07, uh, 07304 and 05. That's the priority. Um, and we're interested to see how is that going to go. So this is top priority for us, local job fair, as well as working with the probation. Um, outside of that, in close contact with the uh, Minority Cannabis Academy. Unfortunately, Brandon's very busy. Um, we've met in person once at the job fair. We've been exchanging emails. Um, but this actually stretches um, a little bit and, and touches upon also the philanthropy as well as the, com the community, commitment to community. Um, I've been in communication over the past, I don't know, five, six months at this point with tons of um, local um, nonprofit organizations. And because I've wanted to remain true to the business, the mission statement, um, and intentional to what I want to do and how I want to do this on my own terms, um, I've really laser focused on organizations that support women, particularly smaller nonprofit organizations that really lack the, the, the funding or, or the resources. Um, Reverend uh, Betha Reeves, Dr. Reeves, is thrilled to partner up. She unfortunately is still recovering from an overseas trip. Not a bad problem to have, but we don't have an MAU, MOU in place. Hopefully this is coming up. So Sarah's Daughters is one of the organizations that I would love to partner up and work with. Uh, tons of opportunities there. Since this is still a minority, a small business, we haven't really taken it off the ground. I am mindful of committing um, any dollars at the moment. But um, I think we've identified a couple of areas of opportunity, primarily starting probably with um, online presence. There's currently none for Sarah's Daughters. Uh, it's much needed. And I would love to see this take, you know, take off the ground um, as soon as we actually have that agreement in place. Okay, online? Online. So, so like you're going to provide marketing in kind to Sarah's daughter as part of your social impact to help raise the bar for absolutely anything from creating a website presence to potentially social media finding ways to really streamline the communication because this is currently lacking it took me some time to get in touch with Miss Bertha and now I know why <laughs> So this is absolutely needed, and this is just the beginning. Um, another organization that I'm working with um, is the Anti-Violence uh, Coalition Movement. They're a neighbor right across Pam Johnson, right across the street or around the corner from me. Um, she had a family emergency. The MOU is with her. I didn't want to just rush her. I was respectful of her time um, and, you know, urgency. So... I can present that at any time shall, uh, should you require this. Um, I've also done outreach to the West Side Community Alliance as well as the West Side Merchant Association. I'm still trying to get in touch with them. Would love to be integrated with the local trade community, make sure that they're comfortable. They know that um, I am going to be part you know, of the small business present on the West Side. It's currently lacking. Um, had many conversations and in-person meetings with uh, my council woman, my council person, um, Mira Prince Array. She is very supportive. The process slightly changed. Um, it's my understanding that letters of support are no longer issued. She's not opposed. Um, our conversations have been primarily around education and how can we help. In terms of hours of operation, Monday through Sunday, um, while we're still figuring out the details, I would love to dedicate a Sunday, whether it's a monthly, bi-monthly, or um, I'm sorry, every two months or a quarterly. This is obviously up still for discussion, but it's going to be a great opportunity, you know, to offer up the space for 
for some education ongoing. Um, what else? Uh, volunteer lawyers for justice also outreach there. Haven't heard back from them. Would love to partner up. So this is another organization that um, I think fits right within the Lady L Cannabis mission statement. Um, so there is a list for sure. Um, I don't think I missed anyone, but oh, I've reached out to SCORES already. I know how we feel about everyone reaching out to SCORES, but I thought it's going to be a great opportunity to really connect. I think that they're just so overwhelmed by the support of the community. I haven't really heard back, but I would love to if there's an opportunity one day to really partner up with them. Yeah, as well as Women Rising. I kind of feel like when you don't hear back from someone, they're not um, as effective as they should be because I just hopped off a plane and showed up, right? Like people answer when they're committed. And I think that's something that every person in a leadership position should should recognize. Like you... Absolutely. There's emergencies, you know, but there's also like returning phone calls. I think this is also and effectiveness of nonprofits. That for sure, I think that th th this is such a new uncharted territory for a lot of us. Um, I'm trying to give people the benefit of the doubt. Um, I would like to think that it's it's just the scheduling, you know, issue. Um, there are plenty of opportunities to really support and help the community. I've also been working behind the scenes um, as a new mother. I have a whole new appreciation for raising a child, you know, uh, this day and age, um, working with uh, community treasures on Monticello for quite some time, usually um, donations, um, anything I could do to help. Um, and there's a possibility of partnering up in the near future, I feel like, that organization is definitely picking up speed. So integrated in the community, this is my goal. As I said, I'm raising a child here. Um, it will only benefit me and my family to be really part of a strong, um, integral community. So this is the goal. Um, in terms of uh, the business, there will be no packaging um, on the premises. So I don't anticipate any other or, or um, anything that will be, um, you know, uh, really um, being problematic since this is a re mixed residential and commercial building. There are two apartments on the second and third floor. Um, I had a tenant and a small business owner here tonight who was happy to speak on our behalf. She has a small child. She had to go back home, unfortunately. Um, but I've had plenty of conversations with her as well as with a few of the small business owners in the area. They're in support. They're looking forward to working together. Um, and I think that there's a place for every small business owner on the west side. Um, so environmental impact, there's a plan for that carbon filters, um, there is um, water reduction, just reuse, uh, recycle, refill, you know, the three R's, anything we can do to minimize the impact. Um, there will be, as I said, no packaging. Uh, the product will be already packaged in a safe climate control vault on the premises, so don't anticipate any issues with that. Um, security we covered, and there's a lot of detail in the plan. Um, and outside of that, oh, the makeup of the team, since I'm um, limited to a 10-person team, I will be that 24-hour contact, um, at least for the, I can't imagine uh, not being forever, you know, as a business owner, it's pretty much my responsibility. But outside of that, a store manager, a couple of assistant managers, one compliance person who will be responsible really for following all of the um, SOPs when it comes to discarding of products or uh, really uh, working very closely with the metric. And, and, the choice and you mentioned the that the job fair went very well. So did you hire any of those people yet or did you? Oh, no, yeah. I've just witnessed. I went okay. there. It was about 300 applicants. Um, so I met everyone who presented that day as well as introduce myself to a lot of the applicants. I don't think it was fair to, for me to offer, um, you know, any job opportunities given that I am seeing you tonight. And, you know, there's always a chance, hopefully not, but, um, but I, I believe that for the second one, um, Lady L Cannabis will be front and center. And I'm very hopeful that we're gonna find some great candidates. Um, as I said, training will be offered um, open to, um, you know, 
candidates from the two zip codes that we mentioned and um, as well as other local candidates. Did I miss anything? No, I think that's good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions from board members? Mm -hmm. You said you said you have you have connection, you know, you've spoken to someone from Jersey City probation or Hudson County probation? It's the how uh it's the Jersey City Court. Kimberly Mack, the pro uh, probation division. Kimberly Mack? Uh, Kimberly Mack, yes. She has that office. So a municipal court would not typically have a probation department. <clears throat> I've never really... It, it's done at the county level. Even if somebody were to enter something called conditional dismissal for, for drugs, they would. the probation would be done at the county. It's somewhat informal, but... Uh, I've never known a municipality to engage in probation. I could be wrong, but uh, after it, it was actually my suggestion. Under it was a Jersey City. Mm -hmm. We because I mentioned you know we want to help brothers and sisters coming home, especially people who are formerly incarcerated. Reentry is big, and so I figured why not tap in directly with people who are on probation or state parole. Potentially mm -hmm. not that they might be on both, but that might be a way to get those individuals to help the social equity piece. So she can provide you with the contact and extension as well as the name of the woman she spoke to to verify. Yeah, it's probably at the county. It's but. probably at the county. Do you have a what's the email end in? <laughs> that will sum up the. I have the phone number. The oh. emails have not. Kimberly Mack. Kimberly it... Mack. I deal with probation and parole every single day, so I mean, it's no pro It's not, you know, I can always contact them. But, you know. <sighs> no, not outside of the meeting about anything regarding to that. No, I'm just saying. I'm not saying I'm going to find out who she is. I'm just saying I just. Just going to confirm, in fact, that it is this individual who works for probation at the county. Yep. You know, that, that's, yeah. I'm happy to provide you her phone number and extension. You want to say it for the record? Absolutely. Uh, so Kimberly Mack, 201-795-6800, extension 60397. That is probation. At the county. It's the county. It's the county. Yeah. It's the county? Yeah, it's not a city I recognize phone number. the number. <laughs> okay. Fine. Good. We cleared Noted. that up. Okay. That's taken care of. <laughs> okay. Any other questions from board members? Have you have you have you reached out to Have you reached out to any other um, reentry programs for people coming out of prison or people you know um, <coughs> on probation and parole besides the probation officer? Do you mind talking, touching upon the uh, expungement? Yeah, so uh, I'm actually going to be helping organize expungement clinics once we get started and once if she gets approved. I'm, I have, I'm hosting one on Saturday that's co-sponsored by Passaic County in Patterson, New Jersey, which is an impact zone, so familiar with it. Definitely have access to individuals at these clinics who are in need of jobs, so we can have Lady L Cannabis on site to help with talent acquisition at these clinics. Okay. Anything so, else? I'm sorry. So where, what are your cross streets where you're located? So I'm between Lexington and um, Clenny. Clenny. Oh, Clendenny. Clendenny. Oh, Clendenny. I always want to say clemency. I don't know why. Yeah. <laughs> Clendenny. <laughs> Clendenny. Yes. You're running the heart. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you say your space is about, it's about 600 square feet or so. So. About a little bit less than 800, mm -hmm. 640 of public access and about 160 of just limited access, which means employees, you know, vault, mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. anything, or um, a, a customer um, assisted or helped going to the restroom, for, for um, example, with an employee. Mm -hmm. So not the largest, but not yeah, the smallest, but a very as we heard tonight. store. Yeah, I think it's decent, um, mm -hmm. and I think it really represents the brand, the way I see it, the way I've, I have envisioned it. I've wanted a small, boutique, home-like feel. I want my customers to know me, to know my employees. I know for the employees to know their customers. I want this to become a regular. I, I do envision, and I wish for this to become really a stop for someone going in to get their um, – I don't know, um, uh, hopefully a mom or a sister, a present, mm -hmm. you know, something little. 
um, or for a regular that comes in once a week and looks for their favorite product. Um, that is the kind of, of personal touch and relation that I'm looking to develop with mm -hmm. the local community. And how many and, people do you plan to employ? Uh, so I can do only up to 10 mm -hmm. because it's a, it's a micro business, exactly. which I think it's sufficient mm -hmm. given the size of the operation. Mm -hmm. And security, your security guards, are they going to be armed or? Yes. Um, so starting with one, Okay. However, we're going to look into uh, various licensed agencies to add on as needed. Okay. Yeah. And your hours? Hours will be Monday through Sunday, um, 10 until 10 for now. Um, but I believe that certain Sundays will be closed for educational sessions, seminars, or community events. Um, and those hours of operation are still going to be TBD until the operational, you know, model is fully in place and mm -hmm. approved. Mm -hmm. So you're in an existing building, I not am. a new construction. That is correct. Mm -hmm. Her builder. Mm -hmm. It's her mm -hmm. builder. <laughs> mm -hmm. Anything else from board members? No, I'm good. Either a motion to go into, I'm sorry. <laughs> any members of the public have any uh, questions for uh, this witness on the testimony that she has provided thus far? Hearing none, seeing none. With the board's permission, I'll open it up to public comment. Any folks in the audience have any comments, either for or against the application? I do. All right. Welcome. There is a three-minute uh, limit. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm the testimony about to give you the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth shop you got? I do. You can state your name, spell your last name, and give us I got it. Frank give Robertson. us your, your address. R-O-B-E-R-T-S-O-N, 1708 Kennedy Boulevard, in Union City. <clears throat> um, I, I just wanted to find out. Uh, I'm reading the ordinance that I, I, I see everybody forgets. It's 21-053, uh, Section D, Subsection C. It says, <clears throat> the main entrance... Of any door of a can cannabis establishment shall be six hundred feet from each other. So Not I don't know. A micro is it? My it's a micro. No, it doesn't say. That. It says either. It says micro business and or retail. So it says in, in this section. It says any. They have to be six hundred feet apart. So I'm. No, it does. It says actually that's if it's a school. If it's two hundred. It says here, if you read this ordinance, it's 21-053. It says, on C, it says, the main entry door of any cannabis established subject to can class 5 license, including micro business, shall be separated by 600 feet. Shall. I mean, you can read that as 21-053. Yeah, and so point of inquiry, Ron, um, this is why I often ask about the space in between because it's like we're damned if we do and we're damned if we don't. Um, so when we ask about it and we don't have like in front of us, you know, I don't remember all 20 agencies and where exactly they are when the four, but I would say like that's locations, but they're not all approved by city council yet. So, right. So there's some that we're, approving today that'll go to council for approval and, and so yes. technically not everything that we're looking at may be approved by the council so this is from the first meeting i asked you know um director woodson about this the distance concerns um and I think that's something very important for us to think about especially i feel like this is the sixth one on West Side Avenue. West Side. No. 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 It's on West Side. Well, in this no, no, the area, the, like the uh, Tunnelly, Tunnelly West Side. Central, yeah. At least North, yeah. North yeah. Avenue. Yeah. Yeah. But West Side Avenue, yeah. probably. That's, if you notice on the packets that you received this last bunch in the agenda, it did include a map because we're mapping them yeah. at the time of city council approval. Right. So there's sense. some that we haven't approved yet. Correct. Mm -hmm. And then there was one on the agenda for today that was just less than 600 feet. And so until I showed up here, I didn't know that they weren't going to present. Um, and so these are the, 
these are the concerns, right? This is what we start the first, very first conversation we had that wound up in, you know, other drama, uh, for lack of a better word. Um, so I see on the agenda, right, 490 West Side Avenue, they didn't come and present. Uh, and so 547 is definitely within 600 feet of that, right? Um, and so when I ask, and so is it, right, because this is the question I continue to have, is it like the first person that gets to us, uh, no. <laughs> whether they have an a, a appropriate application or not, and then we go back and forth with these applications, and then someone finds out something that wasn't in the application that we don't know, and then someone runs to the council behind our back. It's just like this constant, like, problem. <laughs> so um, the 600-foot rule for micro or other versus a 200-foot rule for X, Y, and Z, is it that once the council passes, we can't hear an applicant, or we say we decide that, and it's the state's obligation to review that? No, 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 no. So, the, and we've had these discussions with planning, and it, it, it is a little dicey, it is a little thorny, because the process was reversed, but once the governing body issues a resolution of support, the pin goes in the map. Okay. Now... If that particular applicant that is now within 600 feet of that person comes before our board, I don't think they will. Um, they would need to go to the zoning board, not even the, not even the planning board. So as soon as the, the governing body uh, issues a resolution of support, that's it. So the, so that's the sec the, so the next tier for sort of informational understanding because we sort of don't have clarity related to this um so that means if say this board approves this candidate tonight then another candidate should or should not be able to present to us within 600 feet is there an issue uh, yeah. was the resolution I, saying, of support uh, you know issued if not they come but, here but whose yeah. decision is that that is a director woodson decision correct or is it you already have the map, and then someone can't present? The discussions that we had were we're going to base it on the pin on the map, as we just discussed at the city council. So if we know there's an upcoming application mm -hmm. that's going to be within 600 feet. We're going to advise them, and as well as advise the board, that there's a chance that you're going to be denied because you're within that 600 feet. And who's once, advising once them? That, you? Or the board, like, so are they getting advised before they get on the agenda? Because there's two on the agenda today that were, were, are within 600 feet. But there's but, no resolution. But there's no resolution of okay. support. I'm just, they I'm may just, not get one. I'm just saying, yeah. like, is it a formal letter coming from your uh, division before it gets to us so that we know and we're copied on it so we're aware? Like, it, yes. I just want to make sure that when people come in here, because that, Obviously, we had this issue on Newark Avenue, right? We well, well, the issue on Newark Avenue actually <laughs> happened before we've had the discussions with well, planning and I, the law I department. I brought up that discussion. Yes, correct. And then there was another conversation prior to you getting here tonight. So, so the bottom line is, <clears throat> right now, if cannabis businesses have appeared before us mm -hmm. and they are within 600 feet, it's up to the council. They may say, we're going to grandfather both of you in or none of you or one of you but we've already heard them there's no pin in the map okay so is that in an ordinance or is that a resolution by council that's we've not been resolution. provided okay so is the that why didn't so was that passed last wednesday no no okay. nothing was yeah. passed no so i'm just wondering like so this is where just like because we don't have control over the ordinance itself and the decisions and things that are going to council are then in sort of another place waiting and some not getting on the agenda, some getting on the agenda. I think it does us a disservice um, to it, hear applicants uh, if they're in a, yeah. you know, it, we're, we're pitting them up against each other because uh, they have to come to us with a, with a location and they don't know that someone's looking for a location next door. Yeah. Whoa. We're making a recommendation to the council, and whatever the council chooses to do yeah. is their decision. So yep. the planning board will make a decision, the council will make a decision, and the state will make a decision. We are simply making a recommendation that we feel this person should be granted a, a municipal letter of support or should not. 
So then my next question for you, Ron. No, this is okay. because this yeah, person comes to us already with a conditional approval. That's the and, state. Okay. All right. So no, I'm just saying like Let's see. going through mm -hmm. address-wise, there would be some, you know, it's already, that address is already conditionally approved by the state, correct? Right. A conditional license no, is nothing until they address. actually convert it to an right. annual. But okay. stay focused on the pin in the map. If the governing body has issued a resolution of support, all bets off. Okay. Unless, of course, they've been heard already, then it's in their court to decide what to do. So can I ask then how frequently this is dated 11-3? And this definitely, I guess, the applications that we've seen, they're definitely not all on here because it's saying only the pink with a dot. It's, it's only the ones that have received the resolution of support. Okay. So some of the applications that you've seen haven't gone in front of planning gone. yet. Mm -hmm. And they can't go on the council agenda until they've gone to this board and the planning board, and then the council president will put it on the agenda. So Understood. unfortunately... Some people were heard by the planning board while we were forming this board. Mm -hmm. And then once we got this board formed, we changed the process. So in there's... Some, in some of those cases, then it's going to be grandfathered in as a, a pre-existing use. Or an, yes. I think non-conforming, right? Correct. Yes, it'll be a non-conforming use in some cases. They've been heard already and would be patently unfair to now revoke <laughs> yeah, of a course. planning board resolution. Yeah, no. of course. Yeah. All right. Well, Thank I you. Want, you made I, your I, point. I, I mean, I still got a couple of seconds left on that. All I oh, want you're to long you gone, man. Was no, no, that, go uh, yeah, go uh, city council, and that is absolutely not true. What he, what he, what, I mean, Maynard did. I mean, Commissioner uh, Maynard did say that um, the the city council is when they get a resolution from you guys, and they get it from the zoning and the planning. They are they are not looking at it. They're getting it from them approved from the from you guys from zoning and planning. They don't look at the the resolution. That's something you need to discuss at no, the council I, I, meeting. I, I, that's I did, but I actually did that. So that's why I'm, I'm telling to you. Tell me they're not so, reading my resolutions that listen, I spent not, hours. Not like I'm sure they are. Of course they are. I'm asking you. <laughs> I, I see a councilman here that probably does read our work. Well, well, I'm not <laughs> saying that, but you can ask him. I was there the other day at the council, so I'm just saying I think that if you, it says in your ordinance, and I don't know when this ordinance was written, if it was written before you guys were. Uh, done. Yes, it was. It was, right? So 21 053 says 600 feet. So if that's the ordinance, that's what you guys are supposed to stick by, even if the council didn't tell you that. That's in the ordinance. I didn't write okay, it. Okay. So it. they write the ordinance, not this board. But I was just on a panel the other day with Rosemary, who's in a cannabis, she's the East Newark Cannabis Board Attorney. Orange. What? East Orange. Yes. Sorry. I. East Newark Elections, East Orange, <laughs> Essex County. Um, and one of the issues was that the council had a limited amount of time to draft the ordinance or they had to abide by the state rules. And so they are in the process of amending the ordinance and making improvements to the ordinance. So that is happening. Um, that is something that is in process. I know the law department is working with the council to do that, but... And and there are, I, I'm comfortable saying there are some contradictions in the ordinance because it also tells us if it's less than 1,000 feet, we should still be considering that. So um, just to clarify that for the gentleman who just spoke, there are some inconsistencies and contradictions within the ordinance. We have mentioned them to the city council. Ron has written letters to the city council, and they are in the process of fixing some of those issues. We are building the plane while we are flying it. It is what it is. All right. Anything else? Uh, uh, there are no uh, any other comments from the public, either for or against the application. Hearing none, seeing none. Um, back to the board. Motion to go into a working session. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? All right. Back to the board for discussions. So I, I bring up the location issue all of the time. I've expressed my concerns about Newark Avenue and Central Avenue, but I also think the board has to be consistent. So if you're voting um, based on location and you're saying we shouldn't be voting on location, and then in a second application it becomes about location, I don't really necessarily think that that's entirely fair. Um, Stacy wasn't here for the discussion before, but I do think consistency is important and... I, 
if you're again, you can vote however you want to. That's your We're choice. Never voting on voca location. But, I don't think that well, was ever part of the conversation. I mean, I was in the past because oh. I lived downtown and I didn't want three places not like right next to each other. Like I definitely asked those questions to Director Woodson then mm -hmm. and never got a formal answer, which then caused a lot of other. I, I also just. You know, um, a point for the public is that if you're an applicant speaking out against another applicant, you should identify yourself as an applicant and because that's fair and transparent. Or if you're speaking on behalf of another applicant, that should be disclosed as well. So, so my only concern is I know that half of probably what we have approved are now on the list. Right, so we have uh, several others that technically are, you know, in the area, not necessarily the six hundred feet, um, and have not been approved by planning, and have not been approved by planning. So once, so that sort of, I feel like planning just <laughs> punts it back to us anyway. So, and then I feel have like you gone in front of the planning board? No, because the okay. process was reversed right Got around it. this time. I have, however, been on the record and um, planning commented on the same um, ordinance and mentioned the 200, uh, the 200 uh, uh, feet as well as uh, that since it was so early in the process, this mm -hmm. should not be an issue because I raised that as soon as, as I was in contract on the building, knowing that the spaces are tight, you know, it's mm -hmm. Jersey City is so big. Any other discussion? I mean, for me, a micro business, anywhere they are, as long as they're supporting the local economy with a staff that represents the city and engages with people who have been formally, you know, uh, impacted by the, the the war on drugs in the past, um, have an opportunity to grow in a new industry and can be a part of the community. Like I think that's like a, a, a company that I want to see, you know, in Jersey City. Um, and I, I wasn't not here for the earlier conversation. Um, I do appreciate building ownership. I do think that that um, goes a long way in really kind of sticking your roots in in the community. Uh, I I appreciate building ownership and everyone that has owned a building uh, in this process. I have voted positively for, and I do appreciate the idea of not giving a handout to nonprofits, but helping them with their capacity building because that is something. Um, I think is very important. Money goes so far and um, the real issue in our community is the organizations that really want to make change and need uh, structure frameworks and capacity to make that change. And if, and if your marketing experience and your communication experience are going to help some really important nonprofits um, in our community, I think that's a really great social give back to the community. Um, I would like to hear sort of more active um, support, and it sounds like your lawyer is directly interested in expungement efforts. Um, and, but, I, you know, that's, I mean, that's what, that's all I can add to that conversation. Those are the things. Thank you. So, um, I'll echo what Stacy said. I think it's refreshing to hear a different approach to helping a nonprofit. Um, I know that Sarah's Daughters does excellent work in the community, and so if you can help them reach more people in need, that's more impactful probably than a monetary donation. So I applaud you for that idea. I think it's a good one. I also do think buying a building shows that you are, I mean, you have equity in it, and, and you're going to own the building whether or not this goes forward or doesn't. So you did take a big chance and you live in the community, you're a member of the community. So 
I certainly support your application and would like to see it advance. Thank you. Anything else? All right, motion to go in back into regular session. Motion. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Mm -hmm. All right. Either a motion for or I again. would like to make a motion to approve. I think that um, it's a women-owned micro-business. I think she's looking to partner with the community in a lot of meaningful ways. And so I would like to make a motion to approve this application. Is there a second? I'll second. Roll call. Chairperson Bunny? Yes. Vice Chair Kaplowitz is recused. 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 Commissioner Sally Perkins? Commissioner Sloan? Yes. Commissioner Flanagan? Yes. Motion carries. Congratulations. Best Thank of luck. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. The next application is CCB 22-33 Backyard uh, Backpack <laughs> Boys. Sorry. <laughs> With council. All right. Looks like you're cornering the market, uh, Greg. Uh-oh. Okay. Yeah. Welcome back. Please, uh, when you're situated, uh, enter your appearance into the record. Thank you so much. Huh? All right. Welcome, Mr. Heinzer. Please, uh, Hilzer, please enter your appearance into the record. Uh, Greg H. Hilzer from the law firm of Pashman Stein, Walter Hayden. On behalf of Backpack Boys JC, uh, Backpack Boys is going for a Class 5 retail license. It's a micro business. It's going to be hopefully located at 746 Grand Street in Ward F. The total leased space is uh, 4,600 square feet. Uh, the dispensary will be on the first floor of the building, approximately 2,350 square feet. Um, this is a certified women owned business. Um, it is also a family business, and they're very excited uh, to be hopefully coming to Jersey City. And uh, with that, I can call my first witness. Uh, who are your witnesses this evening? Okay, we have a number of witnesses. Um, we're going to uh, err on the side of having everyone here in case the uh, panel wants to ask any questions relating to any aspect of the business. So we have five witnesses. We have... Uh, Mrs. Sandberg, uh, the owner of the business, her son, Brett Sandberg, who is going to be the manager. Um, we have Matt Best from Joywave Consulting, who is assisting with, um, you know, helping to train and teach the um, retail cannabis industry. Um, we have Russell Davis, who is uh, been, been hired, I would say. Uh, he has been formally hired, but he's going to be one of the employees of the dispensary and uh, we have the property owner uh, dr ernesto tolentino fair enough uh, the board may or may not wish to hear from all of those witnesses time will tell your first witness sir is please raise uh, your right hand do you swear firm testimony about to give you the truth the whole truth and nothing but the truth help you got i do you can put your hand down please state your name spell Elizabeth your last name and give us your address. Okay, Elizabeth Sandberg, S-A-N-D-B-E-R-G. I live at 583 Franklin Turnpike in Allendale, New Jersey. Thank you, your witness. Uh, Ms. Sandberg, would you like to tell the panel a little bit about yourself? Sure. I came to this country when I was nine years old. Um, I grew up in College Point, Queens, New York. Um, got married and moved to New Jersey. I have a son and a daughter, and now I also have two lovely granddaughters. Mm -hmm. um, my husband and I uh, opened up a nursery uh, over 25 years ago, and um, we've been uh, pretty committed to beautifying our town mm -hmm. with uh, selling trees and plants. Mm -hmm. um, what is the name of your um, business? Sorry, Victoria's Nursery. Okay. It's located in Paramus, New Jersey. Mm -hmm. And um, how many people currently work for Victoria's? Uh, 20, 20 employees. Okay. And how many employees have you hired and trained over the past decade? I would say about 10 to 12. Um, I really um, 
usually do most of the hiring in the summertime, you know, uh, summer help. But um, my employees have been with me for over 20 years. Okay. And um, why did you uh, decide to look to open a retail dispensary in Jersey City? Well, Jersey City reminds me of where I grew up. I like the way it's uh, crowded and just the vibe. Um, I like the proximity to the city. I, I want to be near my kids, and um, I'm looking to move around here. Okay. okay and Plant my roots here. And um, what, will your, what will your role be? I, I will be the person in charge, the owner. I will be making the significant investments here, and uh, my son... Brett will be the manager, 24 hours. Mm -hmm. I will definitely be here, you know, three, four times a week. Mm -hmm. Okay. And in your, um, in your, in your current um, uh, business, do you, do you have a pattern of giving back to the uh, Absolutely. community? Absolutely. Yes, we do. We donate... Um, Whenever uh, anybody comes to us and asks us for donations, we will gladly do it. Um, we help um, the, the schools uh, when they want to um, have some uh, guard, gar, uh, garden, garden projects in the schools. We donate to that. We also go there and plant the, same, the trees ourselves. Um, we donate it uh, to Sandy Hook. Uh, when they came, they actually they came to purchase the trees, but we donated the trees and also planted them. Um, we do a lot of work in that way, and we also planted trees here in Jersey City. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, does the panel have any questions for? Any questions Senator? from board members on the testimony that uh, Ms. Sandberg has provided thus far? Hearing none, seeing none. Any members of the public have any questions for Ms. Sandberg on the testimony that she has provided thus far? Hearing none, seeing none. Um, next witness. Okay. I'd like the next witness to be Brett Sandberg. Welcome, sir. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear from the testimony about to give you the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Stop you, God. Yes. You can put your hand down. Please state your name, spell your last name, and give us your address. Brett Sandberg, S A N D B E R G. Address at 22 Pineview Drive in Waldwick, New Jersey. You said Waldwick? Yes, sir. All right. Your witness, sir. Thank you. Uh, what is your current um, occupation? Uh, I currently help manage our garden center in uh, Victoria's. Okay. Um, and how long have you been doing that? Uh, as long as I can remember. Okay. Yeah, since we opened. Okay. Okay. Um, what other occupations have you had in, in the last five years? Um, so I was a professional race car driver for about 10 years. Um, traveled the world, met a lot of really interesting people. Um, but I've also uh, explored the cannabis industry. Um, we went to California about five years ago to um, just get a bit of an influence and understanding of the industry and understand how it works in hopes to one day come back here um, and be able to build something for ourselves here, understanding that, you know, earlier in, in the process of New Jersey's legislation, we could not find an original path um, to work here in the adult use. It was only medicinal. So, um, you know, we felt that it was, you know, our best, in our best interest to go out to California and really understand uh, the industry and learn a bit. So um, we ba began to, uh, to cultivate out there in a farm that we had purchased um, and began to work with distributors and retail dispensaries in California in an effort to understand the industry but better so just so the record's clear so you have a license in california to cultivate that's correct what's the name of that company uh that company is barker valley farms parker valley uh, uh, barker. barker barker valley farms correct all right is that the same company that you have a licensing agreement with branding uh n no it is not you, you have to so buy you, here right? yeah you can only yeah he can't buy, buy cannabis from a cultivator outside of the state of new jersey currently correct. so right yeah well, in their application, there was a comment about branding with a company, uh, different various items, including cannabis. So maybe that was just a mistake, but... No, absolutely not. No, no, the brand is an existing brand that exists in the country, but it does not exist here in New Jersey. 
is a licensing agreement just to use the name. Okay. So you're talking to use the name and not the product from that's Cal correct to rebrand a that's New correct. Jersey brand by that same name. That's correct. So you wouldn't be called Backpack Boys is just the LLC. The name would be Barker Valley Farms. Uh, for this particular application, no, it would be Backpack Boys. Okay, that would be the name. Correct. Okay, got yeah. it. Wait a second. Let me just expand on that. So you're going to purchase from a cultivator in New Jersey, Correct. and you're going to put that on your shelves. You're going to call it Parker Valley Farms? No. no. Okay. No. So you, that's not branding. Okay. All right. No. Okay. Okay. Um, what will your, what will your uh, role be with uh, Backpack Boys, JC? Uh, I'm going to be the store manager, so I'm going to oversee any and all uh, – operations of the store um, <coughs> anything from facilitating to workforce training development hiring uh, anything that's involved with the business I will be spearheading okay and um, um, who will be the 24-7 uh, contacts for backpack boys JC I will be okay <clears throat> is there anyone else that will be uh, Glenn snail would be also he will be our uh, head of security um, who he has worked very diligently with, uh, Sapphire Risk, who we have our plan with. Okay. Um, do you have any plans to partner up with any uh, uh, social equity programs in uh, Jersey City? Yeah, so we have worked with um, really a handful, uh, but New Jersey Reentry um, on a workforce side um, to ensure that we're hiring from them. Uh, to facilitate uh, in employment, and we've looked at I think 10% uh, to hire back from from NJ Reentry. Um, but in addition to uh, Hudson Promise is a, is a local program, um, Hudson County program um, that we've looked inside an MOU with. In addition to the New Jersey Reentry, it's called Hudson Promises. I also just this is not a criticism of you, but. All of the micro businesses state they're going to hire ten percent from reentry. That's one person. So, I just Correct. that's one person from those programs. Um, I understand you can only hire ten people, but when you say ten percent and you don't realize a micro business can only have ten employees, it makes it seem like it's a little bit more than it actually is. Understood. We have um, a gentleman. And I, I'm not saying you only should hire from reentry. There's a very Understood. diverse, talented yeah. pool of people in Jersey City looking to get into this industry. Mm -hmm. I think I saw there were 500 who went to the job fair and that was the first one. So yeah. certainly, however, that's your business. I just wanted to state it because everyone working with NJ Reentry Corporation says they've committed to 10%. Absolutely. Um, we have hired uh, Russell Davis, who's here with us this evening. Um, uh, his sister and uh, another uh, local New Jersey um, Jersey City resident. I'm sorry. Um, so it would be approximately 30 percent. Um, we've already committed to. Okay, and the, I ask this of everybody, but why Jersey City? Because your your mother lives in Allendale and you live in Waldwick. So, what made you choose opening a cannabis dispensary in Jersey City? I've always loved Jersey City. My mother has really harped on Jersey City. It was actually a, a decision that we made together. Um, but she really loves the town. Um, it's it reminds me of home. <laughs> it's close proximity to New York, um, <laughs> where she's from originally. So uh, I think it was just a combination of a handful of factors that really made us choose Jersey City. You know, the, there's several people that come here that don't live here, but always tell how much they love Jersey City. But nobody lives here. Well, you know, like, why is it that you love it, but you can't live here? Uh, I I'm planning on <laughs> moving here. <laughs> Definitely. For us, it's yeah. It's too quiet for me where I am. Oh. And I have my granddaughters, and we'll be fine. We're going to be Yeah, we've lived close. I've, I lived, I moved back up there when I came back from California um, just to be close to Paramus because it's within 10 minutes of yeah. my job there. So but, if we're fortunate enough to get a business open here, we uh, will be moving down. Listen, I lived in Bergen County. I fully agree that Jersey City is a better place to live. But um, busy, busy. how did you settle on Ward F um, and the location? So I absolutely fell in love with the building, um, not even knowing that the building was available. And we had to do, frankly, a lot of digging to uh, even understand that the building was 
up for lease uh, because it was not actively listed. What building is this? Uh, so it's the it's the annex to the building. old uh, oh. the old post oh. office. Um, it's a prehistoric building. It's all brick. Right. It it's has just an incredible amount of character, and I fell in love with the building. We were very fortunate to uh, <coughs> to be able to speak to Dr. Tolentino, um, who has Tolentino. 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 Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, who has his you know, roots here for uh, as long as I think anybody and knows. And did you speak to your councilman? I, mm -hmm. I see that he's sitting here, but did you guys speak with him about your plans to open a dispensary? Absolutely. We just uh, met with him last week, actually. Okay. The building's, the building's been vacant fantastic, for over yeah. about 20 years. Yeah, but it's a fantastic yeah. Yeah, it's right by the building. Junction. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, the building is just amazing. Really what are your cross streets? Uh, Arlington Camina Pond, Arlington. Arlington. Yeah. It's right across from Arlington Park, which we um, have dedicated to beautifying as much as we can. Mm -hmm. um, we've already do a, a lot of plantings here, um, both from, you know, companies that have their businesses here and developers that plant a lot of trees here. But we've done a lot on our end to do it, and we will continue to do so. We've done a tremendous amount locally in Paramus to give back from a beautification standpoint, and we plan to do that here. So you talked about that a little bit in your plan. Yeah. So what, what does that look like? So we're commi committing to planting um, mm -hmm. planting trees, and we work very closely typically with town DPWs. Um, to whether it be so, so interestingly enough, I got this like email last week. It's probably about this then, because okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, just let me go on vacation. When I come back, I'll deal with it. But um, so, are you working with the friends of Arlington Park right now because they had asked about a community garden and you yeah. guys are yeah, okay, yeah. Oh, so that's you yeah. all doing that? Yeah. So, so oh. we've done that in our local community where we okay. have our business, but mm -hmm. we're going to continue to work with our business to give back through Backpack Boys JC to help beautify different parks that are local to us, but more so if the town has a particular project that they're looking to fulfill, we will donate to that project via these beautification processes. Oh, you should also fantastic. contact the Jersey City Parks Coalition. Yes. Well, yes. well, I would say in front of the councilman, there's also an adopted lot, right, very close to this location that has a small nonprofit that could... Uh, really trying to beautify it, an empty lot, uh, the Mandela Absolutely. lot right there. So it's Absolutely. And it's also a lot of young men that sit up right there on the, right on the edge of Arlington Park that could possibly be recruited for your program. Absolutely. Um, the homelessness is part of the, that Hudson Promise uh, mm -hmm. project that I was referring to yeah, earlier. They sit right there, right yeah. in Arlington Park. Yeah. <laughs> so have you been on the ground there? You've Absolutely. been on the ground in the neighborhood talking to your neighbors. Oh, There's yeah. a great store right next door to you, organic. Yep, yeah. yep. Cheese. There's a holistic store right next door. There's a Mexican restaurant, I think, down the street. Mm -hmm. There's a, a barber shop. There's a retail office. There's a, um, another convenience store right across the street, and we've talked to all of them. Um, they are all excited about the business now, I could potentially bring. I remembered your plan, but what? It, it's two stories, is that right? Correct. The building, yeah. right? And you're occupying... We've leased both. Okay. Um, we plan to use just the first floor um, for the actual dispensary, but the second floor for uh, storage. Um, we go through that in our plan, in our security mm -hmm. plan, mm -hmm. um, but for storage and office space. Yeah, micro stores have to be 2,500 square feet or less. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a pretty trippy floor plan you all did. <laughs> 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 what's the, what's the, what kind of security do you plan on having? Uh, so two armed guards. Um, I think two is necessary. Two at a time or two total? Two full time. That are working at the same time? At all time, yes, okay. absolutely. Could you just clarify something for me? Um, your form says your mother is 100% owner, but the certificate of in, uh, a formation says a registered agent is Samantha Alexander. Who is that? Uh, uh, Samantha Alexander works at my law firm. Okay. And that, that was done before they actually had the uh, site locked down. And so. Got it. That's how that came to be. Just wanted to clarify that. Sure. Not unusual, Jeff, that the registered agent is some law firm. Or mm -hmm. Yeah. They do that so that if they get sued, 
they get hired to defend. (laughs) (laughs) That's very convenient. No comment. (laughs) Um, I don't have any other questions for Mr. Sandberg. Thank you. Does the panel wish to hear from Dr. Tolentino? Just just hold on one second. Any other questions for Mr. Brett uh, Sandberg from the uh, board? Hearing none, seeing none. Members of the public, questions on Mr. Sandberg's testimony up to this point? Uh, Hearing none, seeing none. What is the board's inclination? Is there another witness they'd like to hear from? Don't all jump at once. I'm guessing. Well, the application is pretty self-explanatory mm-hmm. and very detailed. Thank I'm you. guessing that's a no. Uh, yeah, I think it's a no. Um, I guess public comment, right? Thank you. Uh, opening it up for public comment, uh, either for or against this application. All right. Good evening, sir. Please raise your right hand. This were from the testimony about to give you the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God. You can put your hand down. Please state your name. Spell your last name. Give us a, your address, and please use the microphone. There's a three-minute maximum. I'm, uh, I'm Dr. Ernesto Tolentino. I'm you want to spell that for the uh, uh, stenographer? T-O-L-E-N-T-I-N-O. Thank you, sir. I'm a little disappointed this evening, and I'm disappointed because no one told me and gave me any information that I was going to be restricted to three minutes. <laughs> I'm the owner of the property, and there's a lot of information that I can give you today about my family, Jersey City, or anything else you want to know about it. So to, to just to be short, very short, try and stay to your three minutes, uh, I'm 80 years old. I've been, I've been voting in the city of Jersey City for 62 years. I've always lived in Jersey City and always have been here. So has my family for 122 years. Wow. So, <clears throat> and unfortunately, I can't give you the rest of that information, but I can give you mine. I went to St. Patrick's, which is right up the street from the building, that, that historic building you're talking about. I graduated from there. I'm the person that gave the, the key to the city to Jackie Robinson when they had their wow. in-between time mm. for that one year that was here. Uh, I went to med school in, in D.C. While I was in med school, I was a Capitol policeman for two years. While there, I came out. I then came back into this particular region after my internship, went to Columbia for general surgery, and then following that, went uh, to the now the University of Medicine and Dentistry. It was the College of Medicine and Dentistry then. I am the original medical director of the original Patrick House. That was the largest drug program we had in this particular county. It started out as an outpatient program. It went from outpatient and included also the state program. So for those three years until I opened my practice in orthopedics, that's what I did. I'm going to cut that short from where I was going to go previously because both my wife and I played large parts in the history of this particular town. The Honorable Shirley Tolentino was the first female municipal court judge. She was the first minority superior court judge. She was the president of the National Association of Women Judges, and she was president of many organizations. So in combination, she and I were on the board of St. Peter's, we were on the board of St. Elizabeth's. We, I was a 15-year member of the Red Cross here, a 15-year member of the Boys Club. So it's a long history that we have here. And unfortunately, with a short period of time, I can't give you all of it, but we played large parts in the growth of this town and what we've meant to the town. As to Sandberg's, the reason that I selected it, and I didn't select anyone else for that particular property, is because one, what they were going to give back to the town, 
to their knowledge of the cannabis field itself, having been directly involved in California and here in three, their knowledge of plants. Uh, that's all I can give you within the three minutes. Here to Thank you. We're a little over the three minutes, so, but, um, <laughs> but but your reputation. Are we assuming that you are asking us to approve their application? <laughs> okay. Thank so, you. Welcome. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear firm the testimony about to give you the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Help you, God. You can put your hand down. Please state your name, spell your last name, and give us your address. Russell Davis, uh, 144 uh, B Stegman Street, Jersey City, New Jersey, 07305. I'm here to co-sign with the Sandbergs. Um, they interviewed me. I met them over a year ago, and they fell in love with me immediately. Uh, my sister, my sister lives down the street on Grand, so the location was ideal for them. I live a block away. I uh, also graduated from Lincoln High School, which is around the corner from the location of this dispensary. And now also went to the grammar school, St. Pat's. Again, um, they've been working with me diligently to hire people in the town. So, of course, they already have two people, which is over the 10 percent that you guys were talking about. And I pretty much lived in Jersey City my whole life since I was a week old. Uh, my whole family graduated, worked at the post office and went to uh, schools in Jersey City. And in, I'm just glad to be a part of this because every manager job that I always had was always somewhere else, like in uh, Essex County or Bergen County and stuff like that. So me finally having a chance to work in a town that I was born and raised in is a great thing. And I'm just looking to give back like Mr. Gilmore over here, somebody I looked up to. And now he's doing what he does. So that's just inspiration on what we have going on and just trying to help back with the parks and just with the community because for me, I know Jersey City is a beautiful place because I, I grew up here, and just with the expansion and everything that's going on, I think it's going to be great. Thank you, Mr. Davis. Anyone else? Welcome, sir. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear from the testimony about to give me the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Shall be God. I do. You put your hand down. Please state your name, spell your last name, give us your address. My name is Matt Best. I don't believe that's on. How about now? Okay. There you go. Thank you, Jeff. No problem. Thank you. Want to spell uh, your last name? Best, B-E-S-T. And my address is 4578 Perry Street in Denver, Colorado, 80212. What would you like to tell the board, Mr. Best? Um, I would like to just echo some of the previous statements here today. Um, I'm a professional cannabis consultant based in Denver. I've been in the industry for over seven years. Um, <clears throat> I hold clients who seek outside help in high regard and... Um, during the last year and a half, as I've gotten to know the Sandbergs, um, I've really uh, had an enormous appreciation for their passion for not only the cannabis plant, but giving back to their community and being a, a corporate citizen here in Jersey City. As I worked with them on their application and I prepare to help them on the road ahead in planning their operation and standing up their facility, I have no doubt that they will do it um, at the highest level. Uh, I as I've gotten to see the facility where they intend to do this, uh, I can see the, the opportunity to improve that site and give back to this community. And um, I would just like to ask for your approval to allow these, these fine folks to have the opportunity to be successful dispensary operators and set the bar here in Jersey City and in the state of New Jersey. Thank you, Thank Mr. You. Best. Anyone else? Hearing none, seeing none, we'll close that public portion of the meeting. Come back to the dais either for a motion to go into work session or a motion for or against. So I, have two. I have two questions. Um, one, oh, hold on, I had to. I had two questions. Um, I think Mr. Davis brought up two things. So one is that you're close to Lincoln High School. So can you just talk about how you plan to? I mean, you can be open within 200 feet of a school in Jersey City. That's not the issue. But how are you going to make sure you keep um, students or people that are under 21 from coming into your business? Yeah, absolutely. So there will be um, an entry with that armed guard initially um, with an additional person that is going to be checking uh, IDs. Um, so you will have to go in, present your ID, and ensure you're over the age. Um, 
that will be something that we're going to be seriously harping upon. In addition to once you're inside the store, making sure that there is educational literature in the store to not only talk about the plant, but understand you know, there's much more to the plant than just what the common conception is. Um, a little bit more educational, uh, intentional, um, I think, than, than others. I was going to say. Have you spoken to them at the church across the street on Arlington Avenue? I I have not. No. Yeah. You, uh, you, yeah. I mean, it, it's not so much the distance, but as a consideration, I strongly do suggest that you go. I, I was. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. And, yeah. and I would just pastor. recommend because um, the, the principal at Lincoln High School is, is really committed to ensuring that kids um, do not um, kind of get engaged. And, and he's having a problem right now with the Delta 8 in the community and a particularly some smoke shops selling to kids in his school. And so I, I do think it would be wise to um, follow up with the, the principal. Absolutely. Um, to just perhaps extend the educational services and support to the school system that's closest to you. Okay, absolutely. It, it's uh, Chris Gadsden is the principal. So if you're, I see your writing. What is it again? And uh, Chris Gadsden and uh, um, Councilman Gilmore will be able to give you his contact information. And I think the pastor is, if he's still there, is Pastor McPherson. McPherson? Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, I think I'm okay not going into a work session and making a motion to approve uh, the first dispensary application in Ward F. Second. All right. Roll call. Chairperson Bunny. Yes. Vice Chair Kaplowitz. I'd like to make a recommendation. On your website for your business, please put the doctor's <laughs> and his family's history on it. Fascinating story. Absolutely. Yep. I Absolutely. vote yes. Yep. Commissioner Sally Perkins? Oh, yes. Commissioner Sloan? I vote yes. Commissioner Flanagan? Yes. Motion carries unanimously. Best of luck. Good Thank luck. you. Thank you. Uh, I think before we do the resolutions, we're going to do, I uh, make a motion to approve the meeting dates for 2023. The meeting dates are January 9th, 2023, February 13th, 2023, March 13th, 2023, April 10th, May 8th, June 12th, July 10th, August 14th, September 12th. Um, on September, we won't meet on a Monday, we'll meet on a Tuesday to be respectful of September 11th, October 16th, November 13th, and December 11th. So just just a point of inquiry, this February 13th, is that a city holiday? Because that, I believe, is the recognized day for Abraham Lincoln's day, which is a union holiday. And I just don't, I just, yeah. We, we would have to look, but we can change it. Okay. We just, I just, have to approve. Okay. Uh, so I made a motion to approve it. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Are there any opposed? Hearing none, seeing none, the motion carries. Okay, and I think also, uh, well, I don't know. They can make their motion. Uh, before we do that, can I get through these resolutions mm -hmm. very quickly? All right. Uh, in the matter of the Application Community Wellness Center of uh, New Jersey, I did circulate the uh, uh, proposed resolution. Uh, can I get a motion? If, there's, uh, if there aren't any questions or comments or changes, can I get a motion? Motion. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Uh, and I'll call those members eligible to uh, vote. Uh, Chairperson Bunny? Yes. Uh, Vice Chairman uh, Kaplowitz? Aye. Uh, as, uh, Commissioner Sally Perkins? And Commissioner Sloan. Second. Hey, do you want me to sign it? Thank you. The second is in the matter of Cush Club NJLC. Is there a motion to uh, memorialize? You voted yes, uh, This was on 550-560 uh, uh, Tunley Avenue. And, of course, always a Class 5 retail. So we need a motion 
Motion. All right. Is there a second? Second. All right. Thank you, Glenda. Um, no, Slow. Courtney. Oh, Courtney. Sorry. Um, uh, Vice Chairman uh, Kaplowitz. Aye. Uh, Glenda. Uh, Commissioner uh, Sally Perkins. Yes. And Commissioner Sloan. The next one was in the matter of Golden Door Dispensary. Uh, this one stands out. This was the veteran who had an extensive uh, application at 638 Newark Avenue, Floor 1. I need a motion. Chen. Right, motion by the chair. Is there a second? Second. By Vice Chairman. All right. Uh, 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 Chairperson Bunny. Yes. Vice Chairman Kaplowitz. Aye. Uh, Commissioner Sally Perkins. Aye. And Commissioner Sloan. Aye. All right. Motion carries. Do we want to address the, before we do anything else, do we want to address the individual that's here that wants to talk about the, uh, briefly whether or not he can be heard because there are yeah, families. Well, well I thought we told him he could. I thought she went back there here. and spoke to do, him. Do you understand that the board has agreed that they will hear your application? They, you know, we'll, we'll talk about it at that time, but you need not, to, you can make arrangements with, with Maynard and get on the application, all right? Or get on the agenda, all right. Uh, th this was a, <clears throat> an issue where um, uh, domestic uh, partners or family members were applying for two separate applications. And there was an issue as to whether or not the state would accept such an application. That issue is with the state. There are some amended rules that um, you know, family members cannot have an interest in a, 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 a license or have a second license. Um, that's up to them. There are no restrictions in Jersey City for us to hear those applications. You may grant it, you may deny it, you may approve it, who knows. But uh, I myself personally believe they should be heard, and so does the city solicitors or city uh, attorney. The city law department. We'll the city law department. Thank you. All right. So, okay, that takes care of that. Any other business, or are we making a motion to adjourn? It is 8.25. If you guys are going to have conversation, we're just going to ask you to step out into the hall. You're welcome to stay until the building closes, but we're going to keep going. The building so. doesn't close. Oh, well, then I don't know how long they can stay. I don't run the building, but. 24-7 security. What is the board's uh, pleasure I mean, is there something else on the agenda, or is no, there a is open, just open discussion? Yeah, oh, okay. So you're making a motion to... Uh, making a motion to start our informal meeting. Well, there's no informal meeting. It's a motion to have a discussion. There's, everything is public, so... Is there a second? Second. All right. Uh, roll call. Oh. Chairperson Bunny. Aye. Vice Chair Kaplowitz. Aye. Commissioner Sally Perkins. Aye. Commissioner Sloan. Aye. Commissioner Flanagan. Aye. All right. Motion carries. The floor is open uh, for the board to discuss uh, emails or some procedural uh, issues. Um, take it from there. Well, the first thing I will say on the record is you cannot email the entire board unless it is to tell the board that you are not coming to a meeting. We cannot have procedural discussions via email, whether you think we can or we cannot. The law department has said we cannot, and our board attorney has said we cannot. So if you email the board and I remove the board, it is so that we are in compliance with the Open Public Meetings Act. It is not because I don't want somebody to see what's being said, but we cannot discuss procedure or anything outside of this format. And, and, and I would and just like Ron to second that so yeah, that it's I was going to say, Ron, can you provide more clarity behind that? Yes. Um, because I know when I work with the council, I'm only allowed to send an email to three council members at a time. Yeah, absolutely. Whenever there is a reply all, we have an internal meeting that the public cannot see. Okay. And that is a violation of the Open Public Meetings Act. So um, certainly you can ask me questions and I can respond back 
to you. I can respond to the entire board if it's attorney-client privilege. And one of those emails might be, please don't respond, reply all, as long as it says attorney-client privilege. So, yes, it is a violation to do that, unless it's something very ministerial. I'm sick. I've got COVID. I can't attend. We get that. And that is not a violation. But, you know, to talk about procedural issues or stuff you want on the agenda, you don't want on the agenda, and certainly never an application, but that would be problematic if um, – Reply all as you. I would also like to make it so that if board members are absent, they have to provide us notice in advance of the meeting unless it's an emergency. Just so that is that so. So I think that's where like some procedural. So Ron, um, from day one, I, I'm I'm very aware that some people are not. Um, fully understanding of Robert's rules of order. And it sounds like that's how we are running these meetings. So if there is a space where there is training for everyone so that we're on point so that we can process meetings and people know to have a point of information or, a, you know, so, so that like what we just did, like not knowing about a discussion. So, is that something you do as the board attorney? Because I think what I think what's happening, or why we're people are emailing, or maybe I don't know. I'm just I'm wondering, uh, is that we all were placed on a board, um, and there was no actual training, and is the training supposed to come from the board? I can attorney? provide insight. Okay, because I have the answer. When the board was formed, it was three members. So Glenda, Jeff, and I. Um, each had a conversation with the planning board and the law department where they gave us a very brief overview of the board and how everything was going to run. Then the council changed it from three members to five members. And when we went to the law department to ask if we could have this training, they said it would have to be public. It would have, because we would, it's Open Public's Meeting Act. So we could only have two board members and a training at a time. And there were people who were very uncomfortable with that. And so the training, what we were told, we could not have the training, if you remember, Ron, from those discussions. So if you guys want to have a training, there can be a training, but it's going to be in public because it's going to be a public meeting or it is going to be in groups of two. Yeah, I have no problem with the public being here. It's just basically a format of, as Stacy said, uh, Robert Rules of well, Order. Well, you can also read about Robert's Rules of Order online, I, which is something I did. Well, congratulations to you. Thank uh, you, let's, let's give Brittany a Okay, hand. don't be rude. All right, well, you know something. But Brittany, this is a meeting. No, it is a meeting, but clapping and being sarcastic is incredibly rude and offensive. Being, but being condescending is also I'm not being condescending. I'm saying wrong. that we could read also but because we were told, no, that we couldn't have the training. It's a bit of a blind spot, Brittany. Some oh. of your communications, that is how they occur, as condescending. I don't so, communicate so, with you guys outside of this room, other than to tell I you not to email the that. entire board. So very simply, I would love to, and just backing into what Jeff was saying, if there's some sort of training for us to have, I would absolutely love that. So I am a mediocre attorney, but a <laughs> wonderful educator. I was born to teach. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm happy. I've, I've got the slides. I'm happy to go through everything. Um, I was told th the administration didn't want it, and I do what I'm told. Okay. It so. was. It became a whole thing, just to be clear, because they, there. I don't want to throw somebody under the bus, but someone was adamantly opposed to us having training in groups of two. Okay. My, I'm sorry, I misspoke. Okay. I just knew that we didn't The administration have did not say no. Right. They said it either had to be in public so, or... So see, can we call to question uh, or make a motion for a training day that is public so that those... I, I think if those people who feel they need training, and I can always brush up on Robert's Rules of Order um, personally... Um, in in a framework for this meeting, right? So that that it's helpful for everyone to improve the working meeting process. Um, and, 
and the camaraderie of us together and, and to be able to get through the meetings. Into the mic. To be able to move through the meetings with greater efficiency, um, I, I, I just find sometimes we, we, we're just stuck. And sometimes we are, like tonight you saw it. It all plays out in public, what we know and what we don't know. Clearly, we can't control the information because we're not creating it in terms of as the information is being disseminated to us, right? Well, but well, I think that's a different conversation, Courtney, because I feel like um, I feel like there's a strong lack of communication from what occurs from caucus to council meeting to us, mm -hmm. and and I'm I'm a city employee, so I'm going to say if I am not at caucus. And it is not my ordinance or resolution because there's 30 to 40 to 50 resolutions and I'm already working 50, 60 hours a week. Uh, unless someone like expressly gives me an implementation guide to something, I don't have that information. I do believe that that's something that's very important, internal governance. Uh, and I do think that sits on the council once a council passes a resolution internally, my, my personal opinion is someone should be designated from the business administrator's office to provide um, Brittany and or Ron or Director Woodson with like clear information to get that information to us. Uh, because I read about the 55 rule in the paper. I right. Um, I often read about my own work in the paper uh, before I learn about it. So, um, so I do think that that's um, that is a problem of um, administration versus elected communication and who is responsible for trickling that information to. Uh, I, I don't even know, Director Woodson, if you knew that was going to caucus because I, I I knew there were some discussions. Um, early on that they were considering a cap, but I wasn't involved in any of those Which conversations. Which is kind of crazy um, yeah. that you were not involved in a discussion. No, just in general, if like yes. the council is going to pass something and your office is responsible for any type of application protocol, it would be in your best interest because then the implementation of that impacts us and our workload and it's important I mean, for... I, I was I was looped in, you know, once it had gone to uh, caucus, just as far as a answering a few questions on the number of applications that we received in the office and that's kind of what they based the number on, but I mean, I do agree that there is some a little bit of a miscommunication there because there's a concern of capping at 55 and some actually some of the concerns that were expressed by the council clearly showed that there may have been some misunderstanding on what different stages these applications are and I say and I say that because yes we have 55 applications that are in various stages of approval but 11 to 12 of those applications are actually we were notified by the state but they haven't started any of that application in Jersey City. Any, for and any and of so that, city. so I think what I saw in the emails back and forth, and forgive me because I was on vacation, so I was only sort of like half reading, and I was like, oh, my God, I have drinks? to turn everything. <laughs> no, I, it not about, really. It wasn't about any of no. uh, I, I felt that there's, well, I felt that there's some confusion um, because I feel that there's a lot of, um, like, well, everything we're doing is public and the public can hear. Um, I'm not hearing everything that happens at a council meeting. Yeah, <laughs> oh. yeah, and like, I don't to. have time for it. <laughs> and, and so, and, and, if, and if the council's passing something and they're making your division responsible or some BA is responsible for communicating that with Brittany and they're not communicating that, or some lawyer is supposed to share with us that and tell us what that means. Cause I, I feel like I, I was just sitting in this meeting about West side Avenue and like, yeah, they changed it from the X to Y, but like we never got a formal memo from anyone of like what the hell planning board is doing and not doing. And like, and so and I, I, I get I, it, yes. and, but I do still feel like, I'm still asking the same question I asked at the same meeting, the first meeting I sat in, which, by the way, opened the door for a, a lawsuit 
right? But I think you also then, have to and that's like obscene. Yes, but that that process has changed, right? I mean, but I, think, I don't have a memo I, stating it's changed. I don't have the resolutions, and are they supposed to come through you? To to us, like so, how am I supposed to learn about the change? Mm-hmm. Like, I, is that administratively? I, I, I agree with you because yeah. for the, the initial um, application that we received, we were under the impression that planning would be doing the measuring, mm-hmm. planning would make sure these locations were you know within this distance, and then many many uh, meetings after it changed to where it becomes my responsibility. The same question that you've been asking is something that I've been asking. It's something I reached out and Ron and I have discussed, and and it was only less than two weeks ago when we had a meeting where the decision was made. It's when the pin was going in a map, and, and the process did change because the council president said she didn't want to see any applications that didn't have planning board approval when there are applications prior to that. So, that so then we should have received a memo to Ron from the council president, right? Yes. Mm. I, I feel like, because we're all, like, how are we supposed to learn that? Well, I the only thing that has changed is my understanding is the process. There have been no ordinances passed. The 55 cap failed. And we can have better communication from us to the council. But that, I have two jobs. Um, no, so I don't that's think it's me. to the council. That's, I think it's that the council. That should be the law department decisions. or the business administration sending yes. us an update. Yeah. But as far as I'm concerned, that's that's something that someone has to communicate to us. But the only, the only reason we were doing the planning board first is because we did not have this board formed and we were not able to hear applications. But the minute we were able to start hearing applications, the process reversed unless somebody was already on an agenda is my understanding. And nothing else has changed. In terms of the council, we can simply make recommendations. We answer to them, they do not answer to us. No, I I understand that. I know you understand that, but... Because I answer to them to some degree, but I actually, like, sit here thinking like I have a role to play in this city as far as like the health and safety of this city. <laughs> and if we're going to present go. a this resolution, yeah, if yeah, we, we present a resolution to the council and well, they wait and decide when they feel like hearing it, hey, it Ron, does a disservice to us. This recording? Yeah. Because remember, this is going to go on. Uh, uh, it's still a public meeting. It's, yeah, it's still a public, public meeting, meeting, and it's required. That actually, okay. that door should remain open, but that on it, you got to keep, the, you gotta keep we, the recording going. Yeah, you okay. can. You know, you can yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you. I, I'm just, I'm just wondering how, like, all of that makes it more efficient for us because I feel like what's, what I feel like is happening is people are starting to change their mind on the council, and some council members are meeting with applicants some are not um that's uncomfortable um and some are you know in charge of an agenda uh some applicants are getting on the agenda some are not and if it's not clear to us then we as a board all five of us plus ron look like we're not doing our job and we're the ones who are sitting here late at night um, and and sometimes with half ass applications and trying to say to someone this isn't uh, this isn't going to help you because if we go down this path with the application the way you have it we're not going to find it to be uh, an effective process. Are you referring to? I'm just I'm applications just, moving to the council. No, I'm saying okay. if the council is changing their mind, it must be by ordinance, and I need to be informed properly by the council. And I'm not being informed properly of new decisions being made to change the pattern in which we are presenting. And these items that we've just passed, these three memorialized resolutions, I expect because it's been memorialized today, it goes on the next council agenda. That's, that's only but that's if, not going to happen, that's, right? That's only if. There's a lot of ifs. No, it's not, it's, not, it's not a lot of ifs. It's the, the main if is if they've gone through planning board approval. That's why that's something that we're taking care of in, in commerce. And at that point, once we know there's a planning board resolution along with the CCB resolution, then we send it to the law department to draft the, the council's resolution. Okay. So. That's, how, that's how that's handled. 
And so can we get a list, or I don't know if this is even allowed, right? Because I don't know what's really allowed and what's not allowed because I haven't been properly um, kind of like given any memo from the, 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 the process, right? We created, this is, I think it's none of our issue. It's just like a request to the lawyers that make this happen. And, and perhaps, uh, Brittany, you can bring this up the ladder because I feel like this is very important for us um, is once they leave here, we've just passed these three resolutions. So now I'm, I'm under the assumption now that we've resolved to memorialize these three companies, they now go sit on the planning board if they have not already. And I don't know if they have or have not, cause I can't remember really, but right. like, so but why is that a concern? Of the okay, because here, it's a concern curious. because I start getting phone calls from random people, and I think this is what we're all getting. And so uh, I get a phone call from, like, the mayor's office asking me a question, and I say, call the law department or call Brittany or call someone because I don't know the answer of, like, where the transcripts are or where they should call you. I'd send everyone to you, really. Okay. Um, but I also think... I want to know when they wind up getting on the council agenda so that I know that what the work that I have done is now complete, right? Um, so there are people that we've passed that still haven't been on the council agenda, and I feel like that keeps an open door. Uh, okay, so what's happening is it was going faster in the beginning because people had already gone to the planning board. So, and we were adding extra meetings, which was also making the entire process quicker. So now they come to us, they have to get on the planning board agenda. I believe the planning board has a hard stop of 930. I think it's later than that now. I think it's like 11. Okay. I'll have to ask Chris Langston. But if you are on the planning board agenda and they get to their hard stop, you go on the next meeting. So everything is getting delayed and it's taking longer. We can agree to have the council communicate to Ron what is uh, Ron and uh, Director Woodson what is approved and they can disseminate that information to us but I our job is to look at the cannabis application and to say it does say the thousand feet thing in there but the, the if you read the ordinance in entirety it contradicts itself several times exactly that is a problem that the law department is working on with the council to resolve as I mentioned I earlier went, yeah. in the meeting they had to do this quickly, and that's how the ordinance I know, came and, to be. And I made recommendations, and they did not take any of them so, from the seat of my work job. So, and they did not take any of those recommendations, but, and therefore we're in this shit show. But Quite what honest. I'm saying is I think that we can work on better communication. That's an action item that we can take away from today. But when we're looking at these applications, I think – we're looking at the application in entirety and simply making a recommendation. We have no control over the planning board or the council. We're just making a recommendation. And the way the planning board explained it to me when I asked the same questions was that it, some would be grandfathered in, one would get approved, the, another would be a non-conforming use. And there was a whole list of scenarios. And they basically said to me, your job is to look at the applications in entirety, and your board makes a recommendation. If it's within the thousand feet, the ordinance specifies we can look at that. But if you look at Central Avenue, there's like five right in the between oh, the yeah, 300 and Central, and, and now West Side's becoming like a oh, hot right. topic. And yeah. when we when we when we passed the first guy on Tonnelly, uh, I heard like some defaming of the board at a council meeting saying that we should do our due diligence. And I'm quite offended by that why would they uh, do that? because they pulled one of, that's why we had to do that. Um, that was the that vote was, by, but now that was the issue of that the was Pennsylvania ownership, the ownership. That was a question. Yeah. That when was, was the person. Added that was 5%. Kennedy Boulevard. And that, that was, yeah, uh, he's not a, have anything to do with Tunley Avenue. Have a nice night. Uh, thank you. Yeah. You know, 
But I'm a volunteer. So I'm just going to say I'm a volunteer and I don't care to hear someone defaming me at a council meeting thinking I'm not doing my job yeah. and, and I'm, I'm offended by it. And we did, mm -hmm. we've done everything in our power and we do all of the research. We only know what's in front of us. That's it. And if someone's going to do research and start like spreading rumors and uh, against other agencies, like I can't be involved in that. And that's why I want these things to closure. <laughs> I, you know, personally, I just, I, can I just say something? So, can I just ahead. say something? Uh, Brittany just said they're working on it. We all know that this ordinance is flawed. They rushed it through. We're experiencing real time the problems with the ordinance. I understand uh, the lawyer here, Tom. Tom Slattery. He's working to make suggestions to the council. My question to him is. Why aren't we involved since we are sitting here knowing the problems? Right. Like, the Law Department is not involved in these hearings. The council is not involved in the hearings. Council. We are. Oh, we know the problems. We know what the suggestion should be. Why aren't we involved? Well, I mean, Brittany could be our, she's the chairperson. Mm -hmm. She can bring our suggestions I, and comments to the council. Is that, so Ron, how do we do that? Do we give you all of the things that we think are wrong? Because the council doesn't really meet on ordinances. They don't meet on ordinances. It's a and, lawyer that writes and, them. And really, I, frankly, if I could just, this is why you sending that report without any of us seeing or reading that report was, it was disappointing to me. Uh, you can be disappointed, but it literally, the only information in that report is what the ordinance specifies. Brittany, there was nothing in the report that... It doesn't matter, Brittany. We all are volunteering. All five of right, us. Right, and I volunteered there's, there's, hours of my time. Of I've, us, I've been Brittany. at every meeting, Courtney, Brittany. and I spent hours doing that report. So I, I don't know what feedback I you would have had, hours but... Here. I think it's just courtesy. And it's just courtesy and consideration. And again, right. and as a courtesy, it was sent to, to you guys. Going back to the conversation about being sent condescending. To us, it, 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 as a, sent to us it should have been hit. sent to us prior to you right. sent it to them. It's We're all It was the culmination of all of the public information put into one report as required by the ordinance well, so I, everything in there you guys were already privy to because you sat in the meetings and voted and just, let me just are there allowed to be comments to be, uh, you know, why you know, could yeah. know about what was you know what was going in the report it's I, literally the ordinance specifies what has to go in the report Brittany, so in Brittany. Second, he, here's and Ron speak he's been asking for a body. there's five people all of us are saying this besides you but I, I, I don't know if you, you, you have anything to say about this. But we're sharing with you. You're the leader here, right? We're four other people that are working with you, and three of us are saying to you that what you did, we didn't agree with it. Very simply. That's all there is. S so simply acknowledging those of, we're here, right? So I just found it very inconsiderate. Very inconsiderate and very disappointing. I agree. So in Brittany's defense, if I just might, <clears throat> um, for years I've represented boards and I've done the report, but I've gotten paid to do the report. And it was pretty obvious to me that was not going to happen. And that's because it took you how long to get paid the first time, Ron. <laughs> like right. so. so, but anyway, so Brittany, she jumped in. I mean, she spent like 24 hours on this. She was under the gun. We got criticized, and it's my fault, but we got criticized for not doing it on a quarterly basis. I don't know, four months or five months or how many months have gone by, and we got criticized. So she cranked this thing out, and it only contains data. So perhaps I should have spoken to the law department and said, hey, uh, four months are gone, or a quarter is passed. Um, should I now do the report, and I'm going to be charging X amount of and if I got that feedback, then I would have spoken to the chair. But the law department said that this responsibility falls with the chair. And she turned it around in like 24 hours. So I think going forward, she probably, she will heed your advice and send it out for some comments, I'm, I'm guessing. But she was under the gun. I have no problem with the report. The report was an excellent piece of writing. It's fantastic. I just would have liked to gotten it before it was sent. It's just a matter of courtesy. I mean, it could have been sent to us exactly the same. 
I would never have commented. But you me. wouldn't know if it was sent to you before or after anyway. So you, you guys are accusing me of something that you don't even know happened, and now you're saying you had no feedback. It, listen, it's I fine. To, the I, the I, way I to have sure. camaraderie on a board isn't to sit here and to argue and to yeah. roll your eyes and to... To have camaraderie is to listen to and the And I other heard people. you. I heard oh. you. You did I did. Us. I said... Because if you heard us, you would have acknowledged each one of us, and you would have immediately acknowledged and apologize for what you did right that's what a person when they're listening and they hear what i i heard all of you and i disagree it was a report simply with statistical information that is required so if you want to see it before next time that's fine you guys can see it before but there was nothing to go back and forth about because it was just data Brittany, no one said there was anything to go back and forth well then i don't understand why you're upset if it was emailed at the courtesy, same time the board it's yeah. the courtesy you represent the board and we are all members she here all, all we were herself. asking is the it's courtesy of getting no it else. before reading about it really just like the 55 <laughs> vote on the council just like the attorney just said they're going to make recommendations to the council of Cheney the ordinance. And yet... Wait, so, so Tom think. was here to present? No, yeah. Tom oh. didn't represent. Okay. Ron That's had to recuse himself from an application. Oh, okay. So, so I asked here. Tom yeah. to cover. So I think this is along the world of, and it's just me just like trying to move beyond the, the next report is due in December or... It's quarterly. So now, but like we're catching up, right? So, and... Well, the decision has to be made. Is the report going to be four months from the last report? Or is it going to be a quarterly report that we're going to do with the standard quarters of, of the year? Who who makes that decision? You, the council, or the board? I mean, this is the, like, this is like really like... Well, I mean... The and, and because I'm going to say like, Brittany going and doing this, an extra 24 hours and just getting it done that I didn't even know it needed to be done and I saw it and I was like oh good I, I didn't take the like personal like I didn't see it I'm like another thing not on my desk that I don't have to deal with so I think we all look at this from a different place I appreciated it being done I think it was thorough I do think people want to see it just to know what we're sending because it represents everyone I, I, I hear that um, but also, what's next? So, like, are we doing this in December? Um, are we voting on, like, the next quarter? Because I don't know how... It, it's up yeah. to the council how they want it. They want it every four months. There was a misunderstanding. But every we, four months isn't a quarter. Every three months is a quarter. I'm sorry. Right? They so want it every what, three months. Yeah. So, starting, if they want one in December, they'll get one in December. But otherwise, it'll be March, three months after, three months after, and three months after. We thought the board attorney was doing it, and then they came back and said, no, we want the chairperson to do it. That's one of the responsibilities of the chair. Oh, I hear you. And, and it thank came you, after the fact, and they, <laughs> they attacked us for not having it done. Well, and it seems like they're attacking us on a lot of fronts, and I don't think that's no, fair I, to any I, of us. No, that's the wrong word. They're not attacking anybody. I, I don't think they're attacking us. I think everyone needs to be more gracious because I think that this is a learning process and they're learning too. This is totally new in... Yeah, I don't think the council is learning too. I think no, I think with cannabis, I think we are learning time. with cannabis. I think they were learning. No. They would ask yeah, our opinions exactly. of what we're experiencing here, mm. yeah. what Maynard and his staff are experiencing. I, I think what some, you're not realizing is as more questions came about of the cap, there were council members that just clearly said the ordinance requ requires a quarterly report that we have not received. What's the status? That's it. I don't think it was a criticism. I think it was just asking the question, has anyone received the quarterly report? Yeah, and, and, and I think also, like, do they realize that that report, like Ron said, it took 24 hours to write, like, this is a volunteer, so it's like you give this person the support they need to write the things. I mean, this is a lot of work. Like, just reading all these applications is a lot of work. And then sitting here and then sometimes being told, like, I'm not, like, the guy that doesn't come to our meetings anymore because we're not ethical and we're not listening. Like, that's, like, really offensive that he sat there and told the council that we did not listen to him as an individual. No, we listened and the three people came against that organization and we voted yes for it. I didn't vote yet. I, I voted no. 
but the three of you voted yes on a on an organization that's doing something in a neighborhood and that that the the you know and i think what it does is it like it impacts all of us and people leave here and if they feel like they're not heard they go yell louder at the council meeting and so if the council isn't taking heed from us right and and ron i think it's really important to figure out the best way um for the council to or or is it that we give you our input because of oprah that then Brittany is able to present that to tom and say these are the things, because I do think this is. You could maybe, discuss them here yeah. and say, Ron, here's the list I want you to send to the council. We we've done that once before. We sent no, a I letter and they did not make any of the changes that we suggested. We did it twice, yeah. and they did not make any of the changes that were suggested. So and so, do we copy Tom Slattery on this? No, or Peter. Uh, Ron. Peter? Okay. Ron yeah. should be communicating. With yeah. the attorneys, we shouldn't be emailing them directly right, no, unless we have questions. Yeah. That letter would come from Ron. It would, and we voted on both of those right, letters right, before right, they right. were sent. No, so I understand. If there's changes, then it would be discussed here, and Ron would draft a letter, and then we would vote on the letter being sent. That's the procedure. Well, my question is, when the law department makes suggestions to the council, will they inform us before it goes to the council? for our input or not? I mean, I read about it in the paper, so I don't think you're going to get informed by the council. I think that's a request that, Ron, we can put forward, right, that we are able right. to review that. But I, we would have to ask if there's any other board that the board makes recommendations to the council and the council apprises the well, board. The, the, I, Ron, it, do you, or, or, I'm sorry, Maynard, do you know of any board that the, the only council other, informs? The only other board I'm involved in is ABC. ABC. Well, well, I would say, like, different. the planning division writes the stuff for the planning board, and they create the planning board because they are the people who decided to write this ordinance, and I went back and forth with Matt Ward, and I found the whole process offensive, and I have a whole team of people fighting drug addiction that gave them insight on these 200-foot rules and other rules, and that's why the fake, you have to now come to Health and Human Services to ask if there's a, a daycare center because they don't consider that a school <laughs> uh, you know like this is kind of like crazy and they didn't like think about a methadone clinic and so these are things that like I brought to the table and instead of putting it in the ordinance they're like okay we'll just make it more work for you Stacy. and so I, I, my staff are getting emails every day about locations which is like not it's, it's, it's not an easy, this is not an easy pathway, the application process in general. Um, and so I do think it's really important um, if, if I'm hearing, right, people sitting on the council saying we need to do our due diligence, then they need to actually listen to us when we share with them our due diligence. And, and if Ron is able to communicate to the lawyers, and maybe Brittany, on our behalf, you speak at council meetings. No, I don't Maynard know if you could... speaks at the council okay. meetings. I okay. do not speak at the council. Okay, so but I'm just telling you guys, we've sent two letters. You can make any suggestion you want to them, and I will support you. But it's it's simply a suggestion. They can absolutely do our, what we suggest, or they cannot do what we suggest. The power is theirs, and and it's for them to vote on and decide. Let, let me see if I can solve this problem. Did you see some of the uh, questions quite, they were Brittany, asking? how come you can't talk to the, the council, council as member? chairperson of the issues? I'm not saying that I can't talk to the council. I'm saying the director is who appears at the caucus meeting in front of the council to discuss our if items. Any, if there's any questions, yes. Correct. So if we give you stuff to go talk to them? No, it's, it's, it's normally a response to either a, a resolution that's on the agenda. That's... That's when I go to caucus. It's oh. because there's a resolution on the agenda, okay, or an ordinance. But I didn't. I didn't speak on the, the 55 cap. Uh, I shouldn't say that. There were some questions about the 55 right. cap at caucus. Yes, gotcha. And I, I mean, I got to tell you, one of the things that they should get rid of is having everybody come back here after they go to the oh, state. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. I mean, that was the a suggestion that, that was already made. We, was we've one of, on one of the slides, eliminate the. It's, 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 it's my it's my understanding that is being considered. There you go. Yes. All right. 
So let me see if I can sort of corral this a little bit. Let's go back to the educational component for a second. Um, You know, if the board wants, I'm certainly available to do it at a public meeting. We'll have to pick out a new date. I think we'll have to, you know, notice because it's really hard to do a presentation and the six applications. Oh, no, it can't be the same night. It can't be the same night. Yeah. So. Because I'm ready to go right now. uh, Second. We're getting <laughs> faster. What was the other thing? What do, what do we want to cap the number of applications at six? I thought we had capped it at four. But we keep we having car- it. the problem is we keep having carryovers, so that's why it's going up. Yeah, but carryovers should be fast. I mean, there's only no, usually no. sometimes there's carryovers that we haven't. That have yeah, that just got turned, turned away. away. Yeah. And the other ones. Oh. Yeah. But usually, I mean, it's up to you guys. But I mean, I I just don't think it's fair if we have. A person who's being pushed to the next meeting because of a, a, a mistake they made, and then it pushes that application to say for December into January, or they request to be postponed. So, so if, if, I, if I if I'm an applicant and I was scheduled for October, and I request within two weeks that can you put me on in November, is that really fair? Because we don't have time to put another application on. No, the way you're doing it, Maynard, is fine. Okay, that's fine. Mm-hmm. Ron, what was the other thing you wanted to say? Uh, you said the educational aspect. Uh, so if and when we pick a date or we figure out a meeting, I'm, I'm happy to do that, okay, and uh, we can go through it. Um, the other thing is you can always bring these ideas, and if the board agrees, a majority of the board says, yeah, I will put a third letter together and a fourth letter together. Mm-hmm. Out of curiosity, when you send the letters, it's sent to all the council people or just the council president? You can't communicate with all of the council people in an email because that's a violation of the Open Public's Meeting Act. So the you way send th- it to individual No, councils. the way that it works when you want to communicate with the entire council is you email the city clerk who disseminates the information appropriately so that you're in compliance with the Open Public Meetings Act. Okay. So this would be discussing procedure, if you, and that's why you can only have three council people on an email at a time, at one time. So it goes to the, so anything that we send goes to the it county would, clerk, and then it's no, ready. not to the county clerk. I mean, it city, goes the to city the city, city clerk, clerk, and, and then, it, then Sean would email it or put it on the agenda as a, a communication. Correct. Oh, okay. So depend. So did our letters run? go as communications or go just to the like the president of the council uh no it was uh, a communication it had to be disseminated from right okay so so they received two communiques from us and, and they sure never about that? are we sure that happened i'm not sure i don't yeah. even know <laughs> i mean we would have to check the i don't know the dates of the letters but we should check to see if they actually made it to. They were sent to Sean for sure for okay. dissemination, okay. and saying. I know uh, he was supposed to send them. And I I know that some of the council people that I well the one that I work with received it. Okay, so. okay. I just I, I wasn't sure. It, let me ask and you a question: we, Is uh, a procedure once they send this to Sean, and then Sean it sends it either as a communication to all the council people or everything else? Do they wind up talking about it at the caucus or not? Yes. Or well, that's what the caucus meeting is for. It's so they could discuss the communications if they wish to, but that's... And there's an, an agenda meeting before the caucus. Correct. Correct. Yes. Okay. So Joyce, the council president, usually has an agenda meeting the Wednesday, and then the agenda is set that Friday, and then Monday is the caucus. Yes, and Wednesday's the meeting. And Wednesday's the meeting. Right. So our communications... What, was it ever discussed at the caucus or the council, or did they just read it and didn't I, say anything about it? I, we can have them resent. My understanding, though, is that in the beginning, the council president had just said no to some of the things, and this was a concern of the council also that she didn't bring it to them to, to discuss. Remember when we suggested increasing the fees, and we had suggested in the letter as well that they don't come back to us a second time. And I think you had the conversation with her where she said she did not want to do either of those things. Correct. So maybe it wasn't, but... That was the answer, basically, no. That was the answer to the letter. Was that was no. Joyce's answer. Can we, yeah. can we send it again? Of course. I mean, let's keep on sending it every, you know... But, so maybe this is... I mean, actually, eventually, <laughs> eventually they're going to get tired but maybe, of maybe this is where, at the end of each quarter, when the report is created... 
then with feedback, can you add a section? Mm-mm. Right? And maybe that's, you can't add that no. as a, like a, the, the, yeah. Peter, the report Peter, Peter, Peter. is also supposed to be accessible to the public to quickly be able to get that information. Information. It's like basically. Yeah, but Peter Peter ba- Peter Baker suggested that the report. The report did not go to should, the paper. Should, the, oh. the report was on the council agenda. Anything on the council agenda has a link, and that it's accessible, and you can view it. But it was not sent to the paper. Absolutely, under no circumstance was it sent to any reporters. It, well, they talked about it at the meeting, so. Mm-hmm. And they voted it. All I'm saying is that I saw it on the on, on in the paper. So that's all I'm saying. So let me. So here, I, look, I don't understand how the council really works, all right? Uh, so if we make these recommendations, can Maynard, Maynard uh, ask to speak to the council regarding this, or it has to be, he has to be requested to come? The only time that Maynard that, would that's speak... That's not my role. No, if no. the only time any of us would speak <laughs> at the council is if the council agreed to make some of these changes, they would work with the law department to amend the ordinance, and it would go on the agenda as a first reading. Okay. And then they would discuss it, and they would vote it up, I or they would vote it down. Right. Uh, right. This communication goes to the council president. She should take it to her colleagues, but... It 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 only goes on as a communication. It, like it's with the list of so I've seen like the list of letters. So that go, that recommendation goes on as a list of letters. But I, I'm not totally clear on that. Yeah. I just know that yeah. it cannot be sent to the entire council at once. Yeah. It goes through Sean. We copied Sean, the BA, Peter Baker, Tom Slattery, and the council president. And we ask that it be disseminated to the entire council. Where it went between then and it, it was not drafted as a first ordinance, so it, it clearly probably didn't make the agenda unless it was a communication, which is where letters to the council typically go. No, I hear that. I think what I'm thinking is it's just interesting because all, um, all the ordinances I work on for my department – uh, so I would think that because this sits in your division, does your department director work on this with the lawyers then instead? Not necessarily. No. And that, I don't believe so. Because I understand the planning board worked on the original ordinance. Correct. The planning, the planning division leadership, right? Because I worked with them on it, mm-hmm. and I made recommendations – my recommendations were put in as an aside because they couldn't change the ordinance because of the timing. And right? it gets voted on. There was, by a, the there, was a, there was a dead, there was a deadline with Before. the state, yeah. right? That you had to enact an ordinance or you couldn't opt, opt out. Correct. Yeah. The way I understood it. Yes. So I'm just there trying to get, how do we get to a better place where what we are seeing is heard, and is that Ron or Brittany or you presenting that? Right. It's. It's not me. It's not me either. It's it's. So there's it's no other board yeah. that goes in front of the council and makes. So we can write them a letter, and it's the council president's job to work with her call or another council person, which is why it should be disseminated because all nine of the Joy sets the agenda and the order of the agenda, and she runs the meeting. It's really no different than the chair of any other board. You set the agenda, and you run the meeting. Every council person can propose legislation or an ordinance, which is why this letter should be going to all of them. So if it did not go to all of them, we can resend them tomorrow and just say, please make sure that the council saw these letters, because any of the nine of them can propose making a change to the ordinance if they wish to do so. Why not just send a letter from the Cannabis Board Attorney to the Law Department with the, I understand there's some some changes or possible amendments to the ordinance. Can you consider these points? That's what we did. I mean, but at that time, they weren't making any changes. So if we're hearing about they're in the process of amending the ordinance, this is the perfect time to send those in. You know, as almost a refresher. This is, I mean, yeah, they, they I fell thought through we the couldn't cracks. change the ordinance. Uh, I think right? to send it to Tom again yeah. and just say, here's <laughs> some of the stuff that we recommended that Correct. wasn't implemented, and we still think it should be. Is Correct. it, is it yes. violating the open 
uh, meeting act if we can see what you're going to send? No, it's attorney client. Uh, I mean, because uh, I don't, well, you know, I'd you, like you, to see what you he's said. He's sending you us a letter. He, we have to vote you, on it. And do you know how long ago that was? I'll, I, I'll resend the letter saying these are the All letters right. that I, that I previously okay. sent. That's not an issue. All right. Yeah. And maybe it's been more time now. So maybe. And can, can we circle back? I mean, Stacy brought it up before and she it was a very good point, but can we circle back on the distance rule, right? Because yeah. there's been multiple conversations about the distance and it did change along the course of the process and just recently is when we made the decision that we're going to map these locations and we're going to make sure that maps available online it's going to be updated immediately after a resolution is passed by city council okay. what i'm also going to suggest um if i can add and i have to get approval for this is if i can add a list of pending applicants pending locations not not identifying who the applicant is but just addresses where we have applications that are somewhere in the process so you as a new applicant you can look at this list and realize there's a chance that you are not meeting the distance requirements I right that's a great that's, idea i mean yeah, I that's a great idea because that and that can be done in a different color code that, that's that's it's not even going to be a map though it's just going to even if it's just a list of addresses oh okay because it's it's very just like everyone else is getting phone calls we get phone calls daily about someone looking to open up a location and they're asking questions can i is there a, 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 another location within the 600 foot rule or 200 foot rule or how far and we're looking at how we can measure these things for people and what the process is going to be and it's 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 not an easy process right because we're telling applicants that there's no pen in the map because there's no support resolution right. but there's an applicant that's so that's like a yellow pen or What's something that? i think it's just like really important because people come here having invested like this last group like had already hired people versus the other group that did, you know what I mean like some people are far into their business planning yeah but what happens for someone who you tell them about a, an app a, a particular location and they get denied and there was someone who may have been no you know, I don't think behind. we should tell them like about a location I think it's really important for look it's all about transparency right government transparency Correct. The more we can share, the more knowledgeable people are. Yes, that's why I'm the suggesting that we have The greater tools they have. And that list can sit online and be updated every two weeks with the council. Because I think it's really important for us to close these open loops. So, like, how many people are still waiting for a planning board? Then, then we can say, look, these people have been waiting for a long time. And I understand that the planning board meeting ends at a certain time. But how long does someone wait? Oh, like, know. I don't know how many people are still waiting for planning board approval. I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, and while it's not my issue, I'd like to see the people that we've approved because I follow a lot of social media that says, you know, like, we're not doing things fast enough, but I feel like we're meeting more than the average person. We're reading more than we're doing a lot of this work. We're like, look. Brittany added to just not even reading and coming to these meetings, but an extra 24 hours of writing a report. Um, like we're doing a lot of this work and we're doing it as volunteers. And if the, and if there's other groups that are cutting off a closure point of closing a loop for a business, right. And you know this, and I know this, like someone calls my office, we're going to get there as soon as possible because their business is at stake. Correct. Right. So how long are some of these applicants waiting? Well, we don't. I mean, I guess the other issue that from what, here from plan, with this change the of plan, all these things that changed. Yeah, but the planning application. The only itself, thing changed is that they complete. go to the planning board after they come here. That is the only right. thing that changed. I'm saying there were many that before we started went to the planning board. All of those people that have now come to us that have now already been to planning board. How many of those have officially been approved because that's like from april to now if, if they if they've gone in front of this board and the planning board we immediately schedule them for the first meeting so we track that in the office 
Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It also we're, we're isn't absolutely tracking that. necessarily our fault. No, it's some not people, our fault. I just think I know, but I'm saying know. some people also delay going in front of the planning board because of whatever reason. Right. The, yeah. And they're going to have more delays with like getting a CO and, you know, like all of those other things. So I think if, I don't know what you're allowed to share, but if each applicant that's already come to us, that's already publicly been passed by us, are they still waiting for a planning board? And that's why they're not on the council agenda. Because I, I, from what I understand, the council's passed like eight or nine of the cannabis. It's, it's, a, 11. it's 11. 11 total. All right. Um, and we've done what twenty seven going through report twenty four. It was twenty three on the report. Mm -hmm. So half, and so are those uh, the the rest of the grouping right? The other twelve are they in waiting for planning board? But we don't know if the the applications are complete with planning. That's that because well, that's the, I think that's the and so, that's but, what we found out. There was an applicant say. When am, when am I going in front of the, the city council? And then when we did some research and planning, their application was still incomplete. Okay. So that's not, that's and that's not like a, good for a CCB. Right. No, no, it's not a CCB thing. Issue. Correct. Right. But we don't know that. So right? Because it's a separate, I don't, I don't distinct know. group. And I do think. I want to know. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't I know. know. I, because if we're passing these resolutions, so Golden Door. Cush Club and Community Wellness Center. If, if these three, now that we've resolved that we have memorialized them, are they now able, did they already go to planning board as they were waiting for us to memorialize them? Well, the or now? They can't. The they can't go. They, can't, they can't had go. all the approvals to build the building. Remember at the heat meeting? Well, that's what the uh, at the last. So meeting. he, they could immediately go to the uh, council. They don't have to go back again. No, nobody. Anyone who went to the planning board, no, you don't have to go wait to go to the state. The state gives you a conditional approval. Right. Then you either went to the planning board, or you didn't go to the planning board. If the state conditional approval means nothing because it until you convert it until an annual, it's just a conditional approval. Right. And they're just trying to get through their backlog just like we were trying to do when we started. So if you we were not ready and we are a very cannabis inclusive city and we did not want to hold up the process. So we said go to the planning board first, then come to the CCB. But ultimately in my opinion you guys are thinking about this too much because until they have everything and there's a pin in the map, it's like the location doesn't, it really doesn't exist. It's an application. These people could lose their funding. Something could happen. It's all hypotheticals. We're approving it, but until the business is open, it, it's kind of a race, right, Ron? Like it, it's incumbent on the applicant to get all of their stuff done, get in front of the planning board, get in front of our board, get in front of the council, go to the state and then convert their license to an annual. And that's all on them. We, to me, and I got very caught up in it and I had to take a step back and just understand my role on this board is to make a recommendation based on the things that the ordinance specifies, which one of them is the thousand. And again, I've said several times the ordinance contradicts itself, but I had to step away from that because it's, Central Avenue is a problem, in my opinion. Newark Avenue is a problem, in my opinion. Now it seems they're all moving over to West Side Avenue. But until one of them is open and functioning, the pin isn't even truly in the map. It's still all in process. And I would encourage you guys, if you're confused, to reach out to Matt Ward, which is what I did. And this was months ago when all of this, I, I think before the board was even formed, it wasn't a conversation I didn't have with you guys. But... The way that I understand it is there's going to be non-conforming uses. Some will be grandfathered in. Like as long as it's in the green zone, it, there's a million different scenarios. Mm. And also if someone gets approved but someone else is opening there and then we say they can't, they're just going to sue us anyway. I mean, ultimately. And, 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 and I think and that's so sort of the system. No, and but I think this is like the next question because it's not part of our. So I think everyone sitting at this table is like, I want to make sure everyone knows what's what, but we don't all don't know what's what. And it's not in our mission as a board, mm -hmm. but is it, does it make sense to ask for a like 
the what to know about cannabis open public meeting like you know would your division host that like you know because if we all went like i'd like to you know from where the ordinance was to implementation if there was like a town hall meeting or a educational se- series can we host that? There's, there's some discussions about it being hosted. I won't get into the details of who's hosting it, but I but if have, you're I hosting it, do we come or do we host it, or is someone else hosting it? When it's that's what I'm just trying to better understand. Like, mm-hmm. I'm just seeing a lot of people talking about cannabis, and is it our responsibility? And, and I know. Brittany, you just said it's not our responsibility, but I think we all are feeling like it's our responsibility to know everything. And you, we all, no one knows. Like and I think you're you saying, all- someone's going to do these workshops. Who, like, and if we don't know who those people are, well, are aren't we the ones that are? You know what I mean? I understand that we can't talk about applications. Can't talk about applications, and we also can't talk to applicants. So Correct. if there was a workshop with applicants, we should not be there okay. with them. Yeah, in my opinion. If you want a separate workshop, again, two of you can go at a time. So it's going to be groups of two and then a one-on-one session because it we are a board. And no, no, that's what I, I just wanted to better understand because I do think if what, there is a workshop for the public, there, there it, we all should be speaking the same language. With, um, I think it's ca- the city ca- handles it. Or the I town. think council people are, and, you know, are considering never, workshops. One of my boards yes. been involved with He's them. not saying the council would do the workshop. Part of the issue with the 55 failing was they were concerned about outreach to communities Correct. and lack of outreach to s- various communities. So they were talking about ways to engage more people to explain the cannabis. And they were talking so, about doing it through the EDC and using UEZ funds. Okay, that's interesting. So basically, our function really is we're the first step, and depending on how long it takes you or anybody else to get through the whole process, you may be able to open up or you may not be. <laughs> well, it, yeah, it's a, yeah, it's I, I mean, factors it's, beyond our control. You're talking about time. You're talking about the building department doing an inspection, funding. Like, it, it's... It's a long. Yeah, it's, it's a much longer process than anyone expected, and and and, we, and when we add in the state approvals, when we talk about conditional approvals, realize we get notification about conditional approvals from the state that don't even have an address on it. How can that be? Because you, you don't know, have to have site control to so have. A- we have that in the pool of a name with no contact information and no we, address. We can't even reach out to them and say, "Hey, we see that you were conditionally approved." In Jersey City, can you start the application process? We have no contact information. They may have and another town in mind. Correct. correct. You correct. can apply they may, they may and a conditional them. license. You do not have to have site control. So a lot of it, what a lot of people are doing is like throwing macaroni at the wall and hoping something sticks. Correct. And correct. then when they find a location, then they start their application process with the municipality but, in which they're choosing correct. to. Unf- right, but, if they find. But unfortunately, unfortunately. 90% of these conditional licenses are going to fall off a cliff. But unfortunately, the 11 or 12 that we have from the state Right? That's part of that 55. Right? Should it really be part of the 55? We don't know if they're ever coming here. We don't know if they're ever opening. We don't know. We have no, there's no way for us to contact them. Not an email address. Not an. It seems just so disingenuous of the state, like just the state application in general. Correct. (laughs) Some of them may never come in front of this board again. Just in general. Just in what I do from the building department, that whole process, even though they're showing up with drunk, I mean, that's a process the world in it. No, right. To get a CEO. So, you know. Correct. It's, so it so could be at the end of 2023, right? The people who already, because there were several, but they're not part of that 11, who were already in business, like the group we saw tonight, they already have a shop. So, mm-hmm. you know, they're already in business. They have to now get rid of the CBD, bring in the C. But still. It's still a whole process. Still a process, yeah. Right. So, so they've gone through us. Then they have to go to the planning board. Yeah. First, they go to the yeah. state. No, no, no. They can go to the state whenever they. Wow. Whenever someone wakes up and says, "I want to open a cannabis business," they can fill out their application and submit it to the state. Yeah. They'll get on a state for, agenda. Uh, They'll get lim- likely limits, a conditional though, approval because everything. the state has really issued almost, maybe even no denials. Then they come to us. 
then they go to, and we're requiring site control. So by the time they come to us, they have to have a location. Either they bought a building or they leased a space because we want to see that. Then they're going to the planning board. Then they're getting on the council agenda. Then they have to convert their license from a conditional to an annual and then they have to do the build out they have to secure product they have to hire people they have to open their business and figure out all of those things and also like there's there's more applications for dispensaries right now than there are for cultivators and right now the law is you can only buy cannabis from a new jersey cultivator that's so interesting all of these people opening at the same time is going to create a problem for the supply chain in new jersey so I know you guys are saying everybody isn't learning, but the state is learning. Everyone is learning this industry at the same time, at least in the state of New Jersey. And the only thing I would supplement is a conditional license holder can't make more than 200000 a year, 400000 if you're married. Now, mm-hmm. some of the big MSOs, they apply for an annual, and they can't apply until they have all their approvals. They, until they have the resolution of support, Correct. they can't, and site control, they can't apply for Correct. the annual. But most are doing the conditional. So it's right. it's a and process, and that's why I'm saying, even though the location is in the ordinance as a thousand feet, or or and it contradicts itself, I don't think we can get, be hyper focused on that because a lot of these businesses are never actually going to make it to open. Agreed. Uh, and unfortunately, the MSOs are going to have a better chance because they have a lot of capital, but a lot of these. And I think that's where we see people who are local coming to share with us their concern. And then they feel like we're not listening to them, but we are, but we are also trying to like manage the like who, what's the race to open. We are a very small piece of this puzzle. Yeah. The only real piece (laughs) is the resolution of support and then, you know, all the other stuff uh, that you've mentioned. Right. And we are simply making a suggestion to the council. Yes, this meets the ordinance requirements. Yes, we think they'll be a good business. Yes, they have a good security plan. Yes, they are going to fit in Jersey City or no. We're voting yes or no. And then it becomes part of a larger process that we are then removed from, essentially. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And and, um, half the stuff that you just mentioned we're not even paying attention to anymore because it's just cut and paste security you know i mean it's like it's like i've read it already why read it again and and then not for anything but this whole thing with the it's it's basically like we're asking them to pay to play yeah it's how it shows up for me and i'm just so uncomfortable with it's like with each candidate that comes oh well i gave five thousand dollars to this one that one i'm good oh okay I mean, there has to be more there. Like, what is it that they're looking for? I, I listen to you time after time, like, in YouTube, like going in more deeply. Okay, so you wrote a check, but what else? Are you like, what exactly. more? It has exactly. to come from. Mm-hmm. If you weren't donating money before, hell, you're not going to donate it now. And if you weren't a person who was into your community and doing things actively, then. You know, but they come here and they say whatever, and then okay. But that's where you guys have a vote. I mean, there have been certain people who have come in front of us who have said things to us, like they've been to Jersey City twice or they've been here three times, we, and we, we, and I and I vote according to the parameters of what's there. So I don't personally get attached to what it is. I, I try to stay inside the parameters of what that is because between all the confusion and the thing and the thing and what's fair and what's not fair, which isn't really a conversation, right? It is just what's presented to me at that moment. So that's how I vote. But the right. fact of the matter is, is, it's just... The funniest thing yeah. about that is, is everything that they're talking about, all their social programs are meaningless because we're not even going to know any of this stuff for at least two years or longer. No, it's it's probably realistically there are some that will open next year who had already been through the planning board process, who came in front of our board, who have... I mean, I know for a fact she's giving council people tours of her space, so she's she's nearing opening, I would assume. But yes, that's why I, I think a lot of these... You can't tell us what you're going to hire until you understand the needs of the market and the needs of your business and what your profit is. Like a lot, that's why I think a lot of these things that people are saying to us, 
they're overreaching. You're already promising to give this money to charity, but you don't even have a profitable business yet. Right. And, and charity is not calling you back. And we see the same right. names on all of the charities. I've said it a million times, and that's why we stopped suggesting MOUs. That does not come from this board. We don't suggest... To me, charity is something you do because you want to. It's not for anything in return, and it's not so people give you recognition if you're really like you see people there are some applicants since we can't discuss the specifics who have come in front of this board who you have known stacy for years or or i have known through just seeing them doing things i didn't have a personal relationship with them but i knew they were doing good in the community because they wanted to well before cannabis was ever going to be legalized in new jersey so some when people come in front of us and they're name dropping I would say 50% of the organizations that we hear about are politically connected. And so someone is telling, and I don't know who it is, but someone is guiding people to these organizations. And to me, giving $5,000 to a nonprofit is nominal. It, that, that can't make a lot of change. So the applications that I was impressed with, there was one where they were having their staff, each of them have to do 120 volunteer hours of service that the, the company pays for. Yeah. I times that times 20 people right. that's that's thousands of hours of community service that like that goes far look at the litter in jersey city it's out of control like neighborhood cleanup like planting trees things that actually make an impact uh, the way that's right. presented that whole thing with the i you like the, what is it the mou the like MOUs. all of that it's Right. What are you saying that like the way it's set up this is the mentality it seems now i don't know this meeting the one before it kind because i guess when we went crazy that week about the scores thing they were just like don't say that again well i also <laughs> tonight they were like okay we won't say scores but <laughs> you know we've also said though that i don't know if you were here for the meeting courtney but we have we the MOU situation got out of control with the council. They weren't getting on the agenda if they didn't have MOUs. And the board took the position. There was a memo issued from the law department to the council, which was between, and I believe it was sent to our board as well, about what we can and cannot do. Correct. And that is when we took the position that we weren't going to talk about MOUs. And the only thing we were going to say is that the health department has a list of 800 vetted nonprofits. And if that's what you choose to do, you should do that. So, but my understanding just from what I hear is that there are a handful of people who ha are now cannabis consultants. And I believe that's who's steering people to these nonprofits because we hear scores all the, well, I'm not going to, I don't want to bash nonprofits because a lot of them do good work. But what's concerning to me is when we see the same applicants going to the same people over and over and over again. Yeah, they're making a lot of money too. The attorneys also. You know, uh, I've asked this question of Ron and make a lot of money. I've asked this question of Ron and there's really no answer. So I would like to know the answer is, when is the actual renewal date? Is it when we approve it? Is it when the state approves it? Is it when they it's open up? up? To the city council. They'll exactly. figure it out. They'll say this is when you're going to renew the license, I guess. Well, but, but there's... I don't know if that's the case. I mean, it, if, if we're following what's been what's happening in ABC and part of some of the instructions where you're going to follow some of the, what ABC does, I think... Once these applications uh, and these businesses are, are up and running, at some then point... Then you'll issue the light, local that, license, yes, and, the, and then he'll have a license, and that'll be a I year from... I don't know, because with ABC, there's no local license. I have a state license, yeah. and they all renew at the same time by June 30th. So you, That's you, a license term. When you issue the license, is that after they do all their renovation and got building approvals, or it's when the state... For ABC? No, for this, cannabis. Well... I don't think it's going. I think it's going to be a state issued license like ABC. Oh. I don't think there's going to be a city license. It's okay. a state, It's going to require approvals from the city. Right, because they have to get municipal support for their renewal, right? Yes. Uh, so the renewal goes through the state, not yes. through us. I mean, we it's, just make it. They come back in front of us. If they didn't do what they said they do, we're going to suggest to the council that they do not approve, give them a municipal letter of support to go in front of the state. But yeah. you don't. You don't need another resolution of support. It might be a resolution for. It's just pay renewal, the pay the that's fee what, and you'll get renewed. Right. Well, Unless mm, at the state level. Well, actually, for ABC, before it's renewed, we upload a city resolution into the state's portal. 
before that license is renewed. Yeah, th there's no provisions in the regulations or the state for an annual resolution of support. No, no, I, I agree with you on that. But there might be a resolution from the city that whether it was approved because it's going back in front of the board. That's, um, what, that's, what, I do with ABC, is that's what I do to, with ABC. In order to renew with the state, you simply pay the exorbitant fee. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> No, I, you know the reason Actually, the, the we keep ABC. on saying that, you know, we're gonna we're gonna test everything that's being said to us at renewal day, but we have no idea when that date is really, or will the renewal I mean, happen even? Is it they, is it rolling? Is there, is there something to renew until the business is actually open? Well, it, it all, that's why I asked the mm, question. No. Is it when the license is issued? Not, I don't think it's from the. Open? And this I don't think it's from the date of opening. Maybe they're not coming back here. No, but I'm, what I'm saying it's is... It's going to be a date of issue at some yes, point. Yes, well... Oh, you mean it may take it out. State. And I'm not so sure if... And, and my question is, is it going to be a rolling renewal? Like, so there's going to be different renewal dates for different businesses, which is going to be somewhat out of control to, to manage, right? If we have 50 businesses that are all operating with different renewal dates. So at some point, they're going to have to set a license term, like with ABC. It may happen two years after, but... It's just going to be unmanageable to think That's we're going to have rolling renewals. That's why I the council was going to probably, they'll probably have to provide some direction as to when the, the renewal date is. Otherwise, who's going to do that? Not I th us. I think the state's going to do it, though. I think the no? But the, 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 the well, state. No. Well, how does a uh, medicinal facility, the medical marijuana, how's that renewed? I don't know. I mean, I have no Maybe idea. I'll, I'll, I'll try to find out from. They have to. Um, I'm just saying, is there a license term? I think what's well, everyone happen. has the same license term? No, no. The, what the state is going to do is once they do their final inspection and give you that license to hang on your wall, you can sell cannabis the next day, and they're probably going to count it from that point forward. Because they will do an inspection. You will not get a final uh, award until they do the inspection. That, so that's for, that's for a reinspection, like a renewal. No, no, to get your license. Well, not a new license because the yes. the rule says like the just the HVAC in and of itself needs to be tested and like the all of the filtration and all that stuff and all of those. You're talking local. All yeah. I'm saying is the state will eventually come in. They'll look around. This looks pretty good, and they will after that inspection they will issue the license, the state license. State so they license. sign off. That's right because of the filthy HVAC. Mm. They, they don't care so about the that. MEP, but they they want to make sure the building's not this falling is down. Question now. They will do that with a CO. I don't know. That? Yeah, that's what I'm. I don't think it's going to be that way. Sign off for the MEP. Wait, CO or uh, the, the state? HVAC? I mean, I think it's going to be very similar to ABC. ABC. I, I don't think anyone's going to have. They pay the state fee. They pay the municipal fee. Right. They have to. We have to make sure that they have a tax clearance every year. Right. And then it's renewed. Right. It's it's very. I'm sorry. Can we just? This is being recorded, just so you're all aware, and this is going on YouTube. So can we just keep one up. conversation? Sure. Okay. Is, uh, there were other things you guys wanted to discuss. So do you want to discuss them before we leave? I think that was most I of it. We, I, I no, was it was terms and everything else. So I don't care about that. I don't think we're in yeah. the terms. terms. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's no, we're not. But Courtney emailed it twice, so I don't want her to think I'm ignoring her email. I want to understand. Yeah. Okay, the board is five members. It's three are appointed by the mayor and approved by the council. And and three year or three there's three ter there's staggering terms. Okay. Jeff is on for three years. I'm on for two years. Glenda is on for one year. Courtney and Sta uh, Stacy's on for two years, and Courtney's on for three years. Courtney is a direct appointee of the council president and uh so it's three board members appointed by the mayor and approved by the council one direct appointee by the mayor and one direct appointee by the council president we have no say in term limits we have no say in who the board is that is all either the council president or the mayor's appointees a direct and one that three are appointed and the council votes on them so we were all approved in, I believe, December yeah. of 2021. Three were approved. Three, Three yeah. Approved. Me, Jeff, and Glenda were approved in December, and our terms started the date of approval. So the new terms oh, would start. Okay. Well, the, the, there will be a reorganization meeting in January, mm -hmm. and 
then w there will be an election and we'll start new in January. We didn't start until April this year because we didn't have a fully formed board. We, it took us a while to find a fifth member. So then everything would start again then? Everything starts just, it's like any other board. Every January you have a reorganization meeting. We would have started in January as a three person board if the ordinance wasn't amended. And again, it took us a considerable amount of time to find someone who wanted to serve as the fifth member on the board. Well, you can, you can actually Wanda find out from the city clerk. I mean, there's, there's a resolution that, I mean, we can pull a resolution for each board member. And it I gives, have the term. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, it, yeah, uh, if you ask John Hallinan, he can send you the list. No, he keeps yeah, I'm just saying, everyone has that. It. It's available. So the three of you are December no sometime. Mm -hmm. Right. Sometime one year. December. December. It's, it's, December. One, two, it's December. one, It's one, two, and three, though. Two years. Correct. You and I years. serve for the same amount of time, Stacey. But I didn't get Yeah, but yours, December, I, right? no, so. but... For I, we would have to ask why, but our term expires at the same time. Oh, interesting. It, when I looked at the, I feel like I was appointed in March or April. It was before, yeah, it was, it was right before we started. Yeah. No, they weren't appointed at the same time. Courtney was definitely appointed before. Me. Correct. I don't know, but I. Don't I know because I remember when we asked Stacy to be a member of the board. You came in before. Definitely. No, no, no one came in before anybody because the board could not meet until we had five members. So there was no meetings. We had the preliminary meeting in January with the planning board before the ordinance changed. Courtney and then Stacy came in. Okay. Then I knew about Stacy. And that's why we weren't trained. Well, that's yeah. No well, training. they went to like a meeting that we didn't. That we, yeah. Yeah. Anything else? Okay. Motion to this adjourn. Was great. This was great. Thank you, everyone, for your patience. Yeah, yeah it's Maynard's birthday, so I'm what? sure he enjoyed spending Yay. it here. I'm sorry, Maynard. He's he's four.